And now, the starting lineup of your favorite show. At producer, 5'11", from Blanchester. The Cow Killer, Casey McAllister. And comic engineer, standing at 4'8", the pride of the West Side. Elliot Rearing. Hello and welcome in to Off the Bench, presented by United Dairy Farmers. Hey, it's me, long time no see. I didn't think I'd be back in this chair this soon. We actually had a bet, me and uh, me and Sean did, about <laughs> how long I'd get a text at like the night before, um, saying like, "Hey, can someone fill in?" And, and it's listen, our boss is incredibly busy. He, he works so hard. He, he's fantastic. But it took four days. It took four days. We got a text at 11.30 last night. says, hey, can you guys fill in? And he said, hey, yeah. Sounds like fun. Sounds like fun. The day after March Madness. And there's a lot of things on your mind as we're going to talk about the first round or some things we like in the second round and just all the general chaos that ensued yesterday and that will ensue for the next three days. There's one thing on a lot of basketball fans minds in the air it's on your mind it's on my mind it's on fans of a of a team that has a a certain pedigree that coach uh, coach down in lexington you know who i'm talking about john calipari and here's the thing about calipari as he exits early from the tournament once again In life, oftentimes, not every time, but oftentimes, you are the company you keep. You are your reputation. It's not always true, but a lot of the times it is true. Listen, I hang out with drunks. I hang out with degenerates. I hang out with guys that stay to bars till 2 in the morning and that you don't have to twist their arm to throw some money on a game. I got to look in the mirror once in a while and be like, all right, that's who you hang out with. Are you that Reed? And you know what? You are the company you keep. You are your reputation. I think there's more to that, obviously, but certainly the facade on the outside is, yeah, that's what I am. And that's okay. I'm, I've come to grips with that. So what is Coach Cal's reputation? Well, you know it. I know it. You've heard it. Go on X.com. You listen to people talk about Coach Cal. What is it? Oh, he's a great recruiter. He can bring guys in, right? Studs. Think about all the great people that he's coached throughout his career, especially at Kentucky. Top talent. Guys that are still thriving in the NBA. But he's not an X's and O's guy. Can't really, can't really coach him, right? Gets down late. And, and yesterday, he took a couple timeouts with him. He's back home. Game where a team shooting out of their minds. He never thought, hey, let's 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 slow him down, right? That's Coach Cal. And whether you like it or not, your reputation is how people perceive you, and oftentimes is, at least in some aspect, who you are. Coach Cal is the guy, we, we all know him. Right? We all know the guy. You know, handsome fella, walks in, says the right things always with a smile on his face, makes you, makes you feel heard. But y you've heard the rumors about him. You know his reputation. You know, all the stuff that he did at UMass, stuff he did at Memphis. Obviously, he hasn't been in trouble at Kentucky, but it's lingering with him. We all know this guy that, against better judgment, d despite knowing this guy's reputation, you fool yourself into thinking, I don't know, he says the right things. Makes me feel heard. Looks me in the eye. But, in the, the day, you, you trust them and you get burnt. And that's how Kentucky fans are starting to feel. And that makes sense, right? Early exits time and time again with the amount of talent he had. National Players of the Year. Oscar Shibwe, bounced by the St. Peter's Peacocks. Reed Shepard. Lit up the scoreboard all season long. Just a few days ago, Coach Cal, we're built for March, 
early exit to the Oakland Golden Grizzlies, who get, for all intents and purposes, yeah, I'm stealing a line from the other host, for all intents and purposes, is their first tournament win. The simple fact of the matter is, is Kentucky deserves better from a head coach. With the pedigree that the Wildcats have, with the reputation that they have, and with the talent that they have, they should be better. And when it comes to things like this, you, you ask yourself, well, what if the next guy we bring in is worse? You can't be worried about that. Well, what if the guy that we're losing thrives somewhere else? People talk about this all the time in the NFL when it comes to quarterbacks, right? The Bears, you could do worse than Justin Fields, but you could also do a lot better. You can't be worried about where they go and what happens. And Coach Cow will have a market. There are some big programs, not to the degree of Kentucky, but some decently sized programs that if Coach Cow goes on the market, if Kentucky with their lifetime contract, whatever that is, that handshake agreement, that if they let Coach Cow go, he will get a job sooner rather than later, if he wants one, right? Maybe he's just done. But you can't be worried about that. The simple fact of the matter is, you're Kentucky. And what's going on isn't cutting it. What's going on with the guy who says the right things in press conferences? What's going on with the guy that constantly is recruiting top talent with What's going on with the, the guy that has the team that looks like the best team in January coming into the tournament? The most tickets for national champion were the Kentucky Wildcats. We were all bamboozled by Coach Cal, by this team. But the reputation is he can't coach. He can't lead. He's a recruiter not a coach. Think about all the great coaches, not just in college basketball, but in every sport. They oftentimes don't say the right thing. They oftentimes don't go out with a smile on their face. They're Kermut, Bill Belichick, Bob Knight. Guys that sometimes are loathed by their players. But that's not Coach Cal. That's not Coach Cal. What is Coach Cal? Is an early exit every March. All right, guys, we welcome you in. Casey, Elliot, I'm sure I'm getting reamed in the no, chat. No, you're doing good. No, we uh, should say anything. I'm sure I'm getting reamed in the chat. I Here's the thing about the monologues that I, I did this for two weeks while, while you were gone. I think everyone hated them, but I enjoyed <laughs> doing them. I enjoyed it. I liked it. it it's kind of like when you go to a concert and like the, the artist knows he's going to sing a song that no one knows, but it means something to him. <laughs> so that's what my monologue is, is it's just I, I, get a, I get a ramble up here for the first 10 minutes before we really kick off the show. Elliot, Casey, how are you guys doing? Good. I'll tell you what. Casey, good doing out there. Yep. Uh, I, I'll say this. I would have been, it might have been the best Thursday I've ever had yesterday, had it not been for one game that we'll talk about here in a minute. But I was on fire. I was nailing every pick. I was excited. Uh, I got to watch pretty... I, in fact, I did watch every game. Every single game that was played yesterday, I watched uh, in pretty much its entirety. I had a great TV set up. I was ready to roll. I was happy. Thir the first Thursday of March Madness is my favorite day of the year. There is not a better day in, in the sports calendar. Reed will, have a, Reed will have a disagreement with me on that, and that's fine. Because I do think the NFL has a case when it comes to the NFL divisional round. I Listen, I'm not going to... It's preference there, right? My preference is, is I like the divisional round weekend of the NFL. Yeah. I also like just random Saturdays in October when, sure. when there's, you know, MLB playoffs and or random weekends in October when there's NFL playoffs, college football, and NFL football. But it's preference thing. If if I, I know I'm in the minority there, so I'm not gonna argue. I'm not gonna argue that this is a great weekend. It's it's the best. It's the best. Magical. You bet on every single game. This is the one. This is one of the couple weekends of the year uh, where gambling is welcomed. And not only is it welcomed, everybody, literally everybody, does it. Even people who don't gamble are gambling this weekend. Uh, so it was great. I, I'm on top of the world right now. Uh, I could have been even higher. I could have been in Mars. Right. I could have been in Jupiter right now. That's how great I was yesterday. But again, we'll talk about it. Casey, how are you? Are you enjoying your donut? Yeah, it's really good. Um, I did not have as 
much success as you did, Elliot. I actually lost money yesterday, but that's okay. <laughs> We're going to win today. That's right. I mean, all I needed was really Kansas to cover and Kentucky to win. <laughs> The two well, Kansas games is, Kansas that we're stinks. Talk about here. Kansas yeah. stinks. They might. Uh, but if you want, we can run down the tournament real quick. Yes. Well, the only thing, and I just saw this come across my chat. Sure. So as I'm, I'm talking about firing Coach Cal. Sure. Yeah. I would, I would love to hear your opinion on this. Coach Cal goes to Louisville. Rick Pitino goes to Kentucky. Just an even trade. I would take that. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, Kentucky fans would take it too. I don't think. I don't think. Uh, Rick. Louis- Rick. Rick doesn't fit. In, I mean, I know he's done it, but like he's not a long term option, right? That's not. You, you need a long term. Sure, because he's option. old. But I, I. He could give him five years. He could give him five great. Five great years for sure. If I. If I'm a Kentucky fan. Uh, I'm absolutely good. I'm signing the petition for, for Slick Rick. Anybody else? Uh, I was trying to think. Dusty May, obviously, maybe one of them. Maybe, maybe Sean Miller. Maybe. But the other thing is, is it, realist- is, it, is, it real- is it realistic to have Kentucky pay $33 million for that guy's buyout? Is that what his buyout is? It's $33 million. I don't listen. You can complain about Why did Cal. they do this? What? Why did they do this? I don't know. That was stupid. That was stupid. It was dumb. It was dumb. And you could, you can, I, I think like if certain teams won a national, like if Wes Miller won a, t- a national championship for UC, job for life, would never get fired ever under any circumstance. The, the, we could have 15 straight losing seasons. He'd still be our guy. When you have expectations, and this is the thing about expectations, some teams have way higher expectations. And Kentucky has a, a roster full of NBA talent season after season. Mm-hmm. Saying all that, Paying a guy $33 million is absurd. It, and, and honestly, I don't even see a world where it happens. And, and I guess I think as the years go, the, the years go uh, down or along, that number gets smaller. So I guess you maybe wait till he gets to $25 million. <laughs> But $33 million, I mean, I guess Kentucky— They pay that for college football. Like Jimbo got like, what, 70 Yeah. Or whatever it is. Why—you why? know what? Round up. Bravo to their their agents for for including that in their contracts. Why do schools do this? That's got to be going out of vogue here soon. You're handicapping yourself. Yeah, I'm not the guy who sits up here and yells about the money of of, of sports because I don't know a whole lot about it. But that just can't be a sustainable practice, especially when you're needing to fire guys as frequently as they do. Yeah, I agree. Uh, all right, I'm going to run through this tournament real quick. We'll get to the Kentucky game. I've got a couple clips and whatnot here, but we'll, we'll start with the beginning. It was great vibes yesterday. We all decided we were going to write a group bet here at the Chatterbox office, and that was going to be Michigan State, Mississippi State, under in the first half. Now, Michigan State destroyed Mississippi State. wasn't close. In fact, they never trailed. Uh, obviously, it's a 9 over an 8. Shout out to Tom Izzo. They say it's January, February Izzo. That's how the months go. And, and he just proves it time and time again. He's the best first-round coach maybe ever. Uh, why, following that. Why it, is Michigan State, I feel like they're always an 8-9. They're always. always they're always. always. They're always playing 7-10. to 10, They're always a 7-10 oh, yeah. to 10 seed. Every once in a while, they'll be a high seed, right? They'll, yeah. they'll be a 2. They'll be a 3. But they're always in there as a 7-10 to 10 seed. Always. E- always. It happens. I don't know. It's The Big Ten's a tough conference. I'll give them that. The Big Ten's uh, a tough little uh, – it's a tough little conference. Tough little conference. I don't know. Dude, they, I, you know, we, we make I, fun of the Mountain West for yeah. getting six teams in and they never win anything. That's People don't like talking about that. But the Big Ten in, in basketball, we're always giving like eight teams, seven teams to the Big Ten, and they never do anything. Yeah, they, that is, that is who true. Was, who was, they've won one national championship in 30 years. Michigan State. Michigan State won in like 99, 2000 yeah. with Izzo. Other than that, that's, their, that, that's it. That's it. Ohio State's had a couple good teams. They've gotten to the championship. Purdue's always good during the regular season. And then, I, I, yeah, it's, outside of that, it's not a ton. Maryland is good every once in a while. But, yeah, I, it's yeah, – Maryland I, won in 2002, but they were not in the Big Ten at that time. They really? were That's undefeated right. yesterday, right. right? Yeah, they did well yesterday, as were. I say that. As I say that. Bravo Big Ten. SEC struggled, too. They won, The SEC did struggle. All right, uh, so the second game, Duquesne – who hadn't won a tournament game since 1969. They upset BYU 71-67. That's an 11 over a 6. I bet on Duquesne. A nice. phenomenal bet for me. Nice. Uh, shout out to them. I don't think they made the tournament. In, they, they hadn't won a game since 69. I don't think they made the tournament since like, like 77. Yeah, 77. So, big win for uh, Duquesne's, the A-10. Duquesne's from Pittsburgh? No idea. I, I mean, just no. I think they're from Pittsburgh. No idea. 
Uh, Creighton, they crushed Akron 77-60. Akron, shout out to them. They are now 0-6 all time in the tournament. Uh, that was sad. I bet on Creighton minus 13 and a half. I was sweating. An absolutely terrible technical foul won me the game. Uh, but shout out, to, shout out to Creighton. Dan Monson in Long Beach State. Their magical run has ended. I thought it was going to be close. For the first half of the first, first half was close. For, yeah, first half of the first half, I, I really did think Long Beach State was going to win. Uh, that's not, that was not the case. Second uh, half, they were terrible. I, I was watching that on my phone. Yeah. Because I, ha- I, I bet Long Beach State. So did I. And I watched the entire thing. I was out running errands. I watched the entire thing with the assumption that my bet was plus 20 and a half. Mm -hmm. They lose by 20. I get excited and then realize I pushed. Oh, tough. That's a tough push. I did get 20 and a half. I did get the hook and I did win. So shout out to Long Beach. It was never a doubt. Uh, so where was I? Uh, Jermaine. I'm not going to know how to pronounce it. I'm just not going to know. Jermaine Kuznard. Jermaine Kuznard, he dropped 40 points against his former team, South Carolina, as the 11 seeded bid stealer, Oregon. They cruised to an 87 73. Another win I had. Uh, shout out to me. Seven seeded Dayton. Now, I do have one clip from this game, Casey. I just have one little clip to how they took the lead for the first time and seemingly forever. Seven seeded Dayton was down 19 points. 19 points with seven minutes left. Dayton went on a 22 to 4 run to end the game. Some of us had Nevada as the last leg of a parlay to win nearly $300. Some of us had Nevada straight. And I was sitting there with 7 minutes left and I was talking with my friends and I'm like, "Hey guys, do you think I should cash out of this one?" And I was just kind of joking because how could they blow a 20 point lead in 7 minutes? They did. They did. Uh, one of the most crushing losses. I had to go outside for a walk after it. It was so bad. I mean, I was, I was, I was devastated. This was a, this was a tournament ender for old Ellie Rue. Uh, I, I tried to get back. And by the way, I, I, there was all kinds of stats yesterday. It's the single biggest comeback in NCAA history since the yeah, Bearcats. I was going to bring this up. Is this the most devastating 20-point comeback that Nevada has been a part of? In your- I'd argue yes. I, I'd argue this one's life. worse. <laughs> I'd argue this one was worse than the other one because I would have profited three hundred dollars. Oh man! Casey, What's with Nevada the- and yeah, Southwest Ohio when it comes to twenty-point games? In the I tournament? can't do it, Reed. I can't do it. <laughs> this is how they took the lead for the first time in like since the three-minute mark of the game, and I knew it was over it right here. Terror. I mean, how does that ball go in? And one, he makes the free throw, and I knew it was just over. Uh, shout out to Nate Seltzer in the chat. He's a big Dayton fan. Uh, and he kept texting me last night, uh, bragging about it. Horrible. How do you, I, it's, it's not possible to do. All you have to do is run up and down the court, stand there for 30 seconds. That's all you have to do. And they still blow it. It was, it was, I think they turned it over like 10 times in the last seven minutes too. It was ugly. It was disgusting. It was foul. Uh, shout well, out Mountain West. Shout out to the Mountain, <laughs> shout out to the Mountain, Mountain West. West. Playing hot. The A-10 went 2-0 this tournament. Coach Cal has gone, what was it, one and four in the last one five? Uh, they showed his last 10 tournament games between the SEC tournament and the NCAA tournament. The Wildcats are two and eight in their last 10 SEC and NCAA tournament games. They are, were favored in every <laughs> single one of those 10 games. Two and eight. Oh, I love it. But I didn't know how bad they were in the in the conference tournament. They're they're atrocious in that. Two. I, I, the, and I, eight. I know. I, I just I listen, one win in the conference tournament over the last five years is not gonna cut it. I know. Not gonna cut it. So shout out to my guy Cal. Uh this is the one game I didn't really watch, I'm gonna be honest. I thought it was so disgusting that I had to turn it off. Shout out to the Mountain West. Colorado State, they scored eleven points at the half. Eleven. They led the game, I think, eight to two in the first like five minutes. Uh, tough. They lose uh, to the seven seeded Texas Longhorns, fifty six forty four. Horrible game, by far the worst game of this tournament. I'll take all those blowouts every day of the week over than this disgusting game. Uh, here, here's the game we're going to talk about a lot today. Uh, in fact, I'll save it to the end. We'll save, we'll save the Kentucky one to the end. Iowa State, they beat the Jackrabbits of South Dakota by seventeen points. Jackrabbits kind of hung in for most of that game. 
Uh, Iowa State is just far better. I mean, it wasn't. It, it was just clear. I was or uh, South Dakota kept making shots that they shouldn't be making. Uh, cut it to like four points, maybe maybe three, maybe single possession in the second half, and then Iowa State just pulled away. Gonzaga, they crushed McNeese. I will wait. I will wait for you. 86-65. It was the most bet 5-12 upset. Did not happen. I was on McNeese up until yesterday. I switched all my bets to Gonzaga. It just it just felt like to me that Gonzaga was going to win this game. Here's the thing that um, there's there's two popular upset picks. Yeah, po- McNeese and I can't remember the other I think one. It's Grand Canyon. Is it Grand Canyon? I think it's Grand Canyon. To where I I, I saw uh, Rick Broering tweeting about this yesterday. These teams absolutely bully, 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 terrible opponents. Yeah. And these teams never, like the teams that get 30 wins, but 28 of them are against quad four opponents, <laughs> yeah. that, that, that doesn't, that doesn't <laughs> transcribe to success in the, in the post. These are the teams that McNeese be, um, State beat, McNeese beat, Bible studies. They beat Bible studies. That's a tough opponent. 96 to 55. They had God on their side. They beat <laughs> they Champ Christian. 110 to 46. So they're just God's waging warriors. war with God here. That's what they're doing. <laughs> and then here's the best one. Le Treneau. They beat Le Treneau 81 to 49. And this was everyone's upset pick I've as heard, they just got <laughs> bulldozed. I've heard great things about Le Treneau. Le uh, Treneau. Yeah, I can't defend that. And that's, But I do think there's, like, you're right. But there are those moments where Farley Dickinson, who shouldn't have been in the tournament at all last year, won a first four game and then somehow beats Purdue, and they're terrible. I so they're, 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 that's what makes March special. Sometimes, you, sometimes these teams pull a rabbit out of their hat. Sometimes they don't. Uh, McNeese just got bullied. Uh, Will Wade, Will Wade potentially goes in, going to Kentucky. Another name is I Will Wade. Is that a Mumford and Sons song? Yeah. Mumford and Sons had us fooled from like 2010 to 2013. Oh, yeah. We thought that was the future of music. I, I still like Mumford and Sons. No, they they're great. They haven't released an album in a while. Uh, outside of that, St. Peter's, they had a less fun tournament. It was probably the biggest loss, I believe, of this tournament. Tennessee won 83-49. Uh, very sorry, St. Pete's. NC State, the 11 seed, they upset Texas Tech. They won easily 80-67. to It was close in the first half, less so. In the second, NC State's magical run. I do think they're going to go to the Sweet 16. I think they're going to the Sweet 16. Ten-seeded Drake. They choked away a win, losing to Washington State, 66-61. They were 6 for 14 from the free throw line. Can't happen. You can't miss free throws. I'm tired of missing free throws. Uh, and and I pissed. also bet. I did also. What? Missed free throws. I'm pissed. I am pissed. <laughs> Makes me pissed. I, I I and I Make did bet on, I did bet on Drake in that one, so that was a tough one to swallow when your team misses every free throw they shoot. Thirteen seeded Samford, they were robbed against Kansas last night. A clear all ball block was called a foul. They lose ninety three eighty nine. Did I send you this one? I think I sent you this one. Uh, if I didn't, I might have not, but I think I did somewhere along the line. It was one of the more egregious missed calls I've seen in an NCAA tournament. And the reason they called it is because of how hard that guy fell. It looked, well, in real time, it looked like a foul. Like, it's, in real time, you can't blame them on the call. Yeah. Right? That's fair. Because, he, I mean, he did fall hard. It looked like he got clotheslined. Looked like he got JBL clotheslined from hell. But, I'm gonna, I'm gonna you try can to go to the replay. <laughs> yeah, here it is. Casey, I'm sending it to you right now. Is it this, right? Yeah, it's that. I mean, it's a block. I mean, he just never, at no point did he make contact with Kansas' player. Look at this. That had the opportunity to be the play of the tournament. And, like, of the first round, I'd say, in the first weekend. That's phenomenal. It's a great defense. It felt like that was going to be a buzzer beater game, too. I'm still waiting for a buzzer beater in the first round of this tournament. It seems like we haven't had one. Uh, since Loyola Chicago, I want to say. I want to say that was the last first round buzzer beater. The it's act- like 2016, it, like where it, where it, yeah. the, the final shot. Yeah, the books clean up on that bet. They do on that, on that problem. That's a horrible. That's horrible odds. Uh, so shout out. I know our, our boss Trace. He was he was saying he was complaining about some missed call like 17 minutes into the second half or something. That was clearly the most egregious call I've ever seen. It was it was a few plays before that. Terrible. There was a scramble on the ball, 
And uh, Bill Self was saying that they called timeout, but they called a jump ball. Yeah, I mean, preposterous. And finally, we have 14 seeded Oakland. They shocked Kentucky. I've got a couple sound bites here 80 to 76. Jack Gulke dropped 32 points. He was 10 for 20 from the field, 10 for 20 from three. That guy just became a legend. This was Jack Gulke after the game. Obviously, we come in, we're the, the underdog by uh, all measures, but. Uh, you just got to, as a player, you can't think that way. You got to go out there and you got to think that you have the same talent level as them. I know they have draft picks and I know I'm not going to the NBA, but uh, I know on any given night I can compete with those type of guys and our team can compete with those type of guys. And that's why I was so confident going into it. And that's why I say we're not a Cinderella because when we play our A game, we're, we can be the best team on the floor. Obviously, we come in, we're the... the Who's, whose hairline is winning the battle better? <laughs> His or mine? Because they're, they're both retreating. They're both having a losing battle there. But uh, did, did you see that guy's stats this year? Oh, yeah. He shot 350 times. He shot eight two-pointers. <laughs> eight? <laughs> Preposterous. The way he goes, and I love it. I, there should be more people like him in college basketball. There should be, like, selective players who just say, I'm only shooting three-pointers. Right. That's it. I'm not going right. to enter the paint. Not going to get near it. Uh, so shout-out to Jack Golke. Their coach. He's a D2 transfer. He is D2 transfer, legend in college basketball, Greg, Camp Greg Campy. This was what he had to say after the game. I believe I sent you that. That's correct. Boom. It, it, for us, we played, and I got asked this in, a couple days ago, you, you don't blow anybody out. You don't, you know, you won a championship, but your, your numbers are you're in the middle of the pack and everything. And you, we just win close games. We've done it all year. We lost a very close one to Ohio State and a very close one to Illinois. We learned from those games. When we beat Xavier in a close game, we knew we, that we, knew we were a special team. And we just have Damn different right. ways to beat you. Um, and, but we, our, our zone is, I mean, it's, it's good. And we defend. That's so much different for me. I've always been a coach that won games with offense. And this year, it's all been defense. And, you know, great players making plays down the stretch, and we just win close games. And if you would have been in our huddles the last seven, eight minutes of the game, we said if we get it to the, if we're ahead with the six minutes to go in the game, we will win. And they believed that, and they did, because they've done it all year. We win close games. We make plays. Trey with a fadeaway jump shot. DQ Cole with a shot in the corner when it looked like all hell was breaking loose, right? We had a seven point lead, and all of a sudden it's two. And we're in a panic, the shot clock's running down, and Rocket gave it up. Rocket Watts gave it up, and DQ buried it. We just do those things, and that's how you win, and we won. Look at that guy. Hey, Look at that guy, on. just an absolute legend. Now, that's how, that's how a coach should handle a press conference. <coughs> There's another coach after the game that handled it worse, and that would be the guy on the losing side, Reed. I believe this would be called throwing your team under the bus. <laughs> And, uh, but, you know, we had some guys that didn't play the way they'd been playing all year. Um, we did everything we could. We, we knew the zone would be tough, but we missed shots we don't miss. And, um, you know, the preparation, I thought they were in a great trying to keep them loose. But when the game started, they, you know, they just, you had some guys not play to the level they could play. And uh, Interesting. Had some guys not playing up to their, uh, their capabilities. And which might be true, but it's certainly not a way I would handle that press conference after you, you lose another game in the first round to a seed and to a team that has no business being on the same floor as you. I agree with Reed's opening monologue. I, at some point, I know the buyout's $33 million. You're a blue blood. Whether or not you want to be a blue blood doesn't matter because that's what you are. Kentucky is a blue blood basketball 100%, program. 100%, yeah. You can't have it anymore. He's right. got to go. Right. Cal, Cal's got to go. It, you can't be considered a serious basketball program and continue to lose these games. It can't happen. And you can't, you can't, you cannot be worried about Coach Cal going somewhere else and having success. That is not how you can conduct business, right? You, you, you can't go into this being like, well, what if he goes to Louisville and he wins a lot? What if he goes to Ohio State and he wins a lot? What if he go wherever he goes, right? You can't worry about that because. Look at what is going on. It's not working. It's not working. You can't 
you can't look at a relationship. You, you, you can't be dating somebody and go like, well, yeah, if I break up with her, what if she like goes and, and like dates somebody more successful? You can't worry about that. You got to worry about what you're doing and, and what Coach Cal, the relationship between Coach Cal and Kentucky is doing. It's not working. It's simply not working. And you, can, you, you can't disagree with it anymore. I don't think you can. What, they, they haven't been to a Final Four in a decade. Kentucky. How many NBA players have come out of Kentucky in a decade? They had a National Player of the Year, Oscar Shibwe. And they lost to St. Peter's in the first <laughs> round. Then they bring him back. Early exit again. It doesn't work. And, 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 and here's the thing like about Coach Cal. And, and I know, obviously, his comments last night, I said, like, he always says, like, he's very politician like, right? He is. He's very politician like. You don't want to trust him, but for some reason, he says some words and you do. Every year, every year, you get fooled on this. No more. Stop it. Stop it. Because it's not working. It's simply not working i did love uh oakland's coach yeah great campy I, I don't know if you watched the post game like directly after like the comments on the court but i love coach speak i love watching talk talking to a coach and knowing exactly what they're going to say you know sometimes with chatterbox we used to do stuff with high school and you know you'd go interview the coach after the game and you could almost if you knew the coach at all you could just i mean guarantee the exact points he was going to say and, and what did Greg Campy said? He's like, we're gonna we're, we're we're gonna celebrate for about thirty minutes, <laughs> then it's back to work. It's back to work. It's like, oh yeah, it's like it, it, it's the first time that you heard someone say, "I hate losing more than I like winning, more than I love winning." And you're like, oh my god, that dude's spitting. That, 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 that dude's dropping bars. And then, like, the next coach you had says it. And then the next coach you had says it. And you're like, oh, like, <laughs> this is this is dumb. This is, I've heard this 36 times. Can, can we find a new tri- tired trope, a new trite thing to say? Instead, it's, we're going to celebrate 30 minutes. Work's not done. Still a job to do. But I, congratulations. Everybody. I love making fun of those. I love making fun of coach speak too. But it's at the same time, like they have to do that. They have to speak like that. It's I, there's a couple guys that get away with not speaking like that. But like Wes Miller says the same five things after every single game. Same. Fi- I'm proud of our guys. Our guys played great. Our guys uh, fought till the end. I'm pissed. And they just do the same exact thing. It's just because it's safe. The no, it's not going to stir up any controversy. Nick Kirby's putting some pro cal. Uh, and I, I think that's preposterous, but here we go. What are we, yeah, what are we talking since about? Since 2015, since 2015, they have been a 1, 4, 2, 5, 2, 2, 4, 2, 6, and 3 seed. The only year they didn't make it was the COVID year. This is overreaction. At some point, you have to win in the postseason. At some point, just getting there isn't good enough. What are, what are we, exactly. Listen, all, all teams, and, and all businesses, all people, families, friendships, relationships, whatever, have different expectations. If Xavier has a coach that's getting us into the tournament every year as a five, four, three, we don't, like, that's great. That's fantastic. If you're the head coach of, I'm pulling one out of the hat here, Auburn, Bruce Pearl. If you're getting to the tournament consistently and then every once in a while make a little bit of a run, that's pretty good. When you're Duke, when you're North Carolina, when you're Kentucky, when you get the players that you get, some partly because of your coach, right? Coach Cal been a fantastic recruiter everywhere he's been, but a lot because of the name on the front of your jersey. And the banners hanging in the rafters of Rupp Arena, then being a high seed does nothing. Nobody cares. Listen, the Yankees win a hundred games a lot. You think they're happy with going to the ALCS every year? Every other year, whatever it's been? No. No. The Cowboys win 12 games every year, 11, 10 games. They're in the postseason every year. If if that's the Jacksonville Jaguars, (laughs) 
you're pumped. If that's the Atlanta Falcons, you're pumped. But you're the Dallas Cowboys. That doesn't cut it. Listen, we'll keep, we'll, we'll, we'll keep it churning out. You think Ohio State's excited about a 10-win season or an 11-win season? No. No. That's always been my gripe about college football. Is how, It doesn't seem like a whole lot of fun being an Ohio State fan because you could be undefeated, then you lose to Michigan, and the season's a wash. It sucks. But that's the nature. When you're Ole Miss, you're Lane Kiffin at Ole Miss, you win 10 games, they build a statue. Listen, if you're a one, two, three, four seed every year since 2016, that's fantastic. But when you get bounced by St. Peter's, when you get bounced by Oakland, when you're two and eight over your last 10 NCAA and SEC tournament games, when you're favored in every single one of them, this isn't an overreaction. This is the proper discourse we should be having. All right, I'm done. I like, I, I, listen, I, I, I agree with you 100%. I, at some point, settling for mediocrity at certain uh, institutions isn't acceptable. And unfortunately, Kentucky, if they continue to ride with Cal, they are settling for mediocrity. $33 million is, is an it's not, let, let, preposterous let me, amount of money. But I know they've got boosters. I know they've got a, a, a university that's willing to pay whatever to, to get that basketball program you, back on track. You, You'll, what, who was the team they lost to earlier this year? Some terrible team. Uh, I, I'm going to forget it. And I, UNC and I, Wilmington. UNC Wilmington. They can, at home. It can't happen. This kind of stuff can't happen. I'm sorry. That's it. What? Uh, go ahead. Sorry. It's like everyone talks about the talent they have on the floor. But to win a championship, we talk about this a lot, right? To win a championship game, it's, it's a recipe. You need players. You need a little bit of luck, especially in a tournament like the NCAA tournament, which is a crapshoot, for better or for worse. But when it comes to Kentucky, they get these high seeds because when they walk on the floor, they've just got better guys. And that is to credit Coach Calipari. 100%. That is, that is a credit to Coach Cal. But when you get to the end of the tournament, the Elite Eight, the Final Four, the National Championship game, when the talent's decently similar, they're, they're, it's not adding up, right? You need a coach. And, and, and Cal isn't a leader. I'm sorry. From the, from the periphery, doesn't look like a leader. Don't know him. Never met him. Never probably will. Got to try to get him on the show multiple times. <laughs> but It's like he's it's, an agent. It's like he's an agent. That's, it's, that's, it's, he's, he, he's, he's what he is, right? Yeah. He's, he's his reputation. It's the monologue all over again. He's the recruiter. He's the recruiter. He's not the coach. He's the recruiter. That does it win at the highest level once again think about all the great coaches in every sport every sport parcells belichick larusa bobby cox bob knight coach k i wasn't i'm too i, I don't know john wooden's reputation apologies <laughs> no he won a lot no no no, no he won a lot but the grizzled guys, the non-politician guys, those are the ones that win. Can, do, do, people that play for Cal like him. It's credit to Cal. That's how he gets the recruits in. And, and that's fantastic. But he's not the leader that Kentucky needs. And he will have success wherever he goes. If they do end up firing him, I don't think they will. But he will go somewhere, and they will be good. That's just a simple fact of the matter. But you can't beat yourself up if you're Kentucky for doing that. Now, is it risky? Like with Coach Cal, you know you're going to be pretty good. You're going to be in the tournament. You're going to be in the tournament. You're probably going to have a decently high seed. And we've all seen what happened to former powerhouses like an Indiana University once they lose a legendary coach. But you just got to look yourself in the mirror and ask the simple question, are we okay are we meeting expectations? Are we okay with this? Or do we need to shift our expectations? And I don't think 
Kentucky fans should shift their expectations. I don't think their expectations should be bounced by random schools that you don't hear about till the month of March. About schools that are named Oakland that are in Michigan. About a school named a Peacock. Their mascot's a Peacock. I don't think that's where Kentucky expectations should be. I, I honest, and you can be a good, here's the thing. You can be a great coach like Cal. You can be a good coach and it, it, your situation might not work. That, that happens all around sports. This situation for him is currently not working. He's a great recruiter. If he leaves and goes to Louisville or Duke or wherever he wants to go, he will be successful. But as for right now in Kentucky, you have to change it. Now, last night was an all-time Twitter night for Kentucky fans. There are a lot of fan bases when they lose. It's very funny to see them freak out on Twitter. Reds fans are certainly among them. Uh, Cubs fans, very Chicago sports fans, very funny. There might not be Ohio State fans, very funny. There oh. might not be a more funny fan base when their Listen. program loses like a game. It, it, especially during the regular season than Kentucky. An all-time heater last night. Can, I say this knowing that there's 113 people watching. But Ohio State fans that are watching this show, I know I dig on you guys sometimes. It's all in love. I love every single one of you guys. But can we admit something? Kentucky and Ohio State fans are the same kind of fan. And I, I, I've i gone down and said that all fans are pretty similar. But, like, <laughs> they're right there, right? Ohio State fans hating Kentucky fans and Kentucky fans hating Ohio State is funny because they share so many similar <laughs> qualities. It's just different sports. But go on with the heater. I think I, I don't know. I, I can't show a ton of it because it's probably rated R. But <laughs> there was a couple guys in there like we're gonna storm Lexington. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna march through Lexington <laughs> with pickaxes, and we're gonna we're not leaving until cows fired. Some guy was saying if every person showed up to Rupp Arena with one dollar, maybe we can help <laughs> help uh, the thirty three million dollar payout. <laughs> it was so funny. Uh, and by the way, some of us in this room, I sent the clip to Casey Rue on Twitter, on X.com. It should be the last thing I sent you. Some of us in this room were spot on about Oakland. Some of us were spot on. Ooh. And I think it's time for a little victory lap. Ooh. I think that's what we're going to do here. Yeah. We were talking okay, so about it. And by the way, shout out to Xavier. So, shout out to Xavier. Oakland. That is a qual. That's a quad one Kentucky? win. Yep. That's a and. Really. And no, you really I believe, yeah. I believe no, we're back. We're back. It I, he threw it up there while you were talking. No, I believe it. I was. The what? clip that you requested. Right. Which one? They have. Oh, they have. Uh, no, I, I 100% believe it. Oh, is that it? Yeah. <laughs> I, there's a lot of money being poured in on Kentucky right now. I believe Kentucky winning the tournament is is Las Vegas, whoever the the book. Right. It's their biggest liability. So that means if. You're just using your brain logically. They're going to lose in the first round. They're going to lose. They're in going to the lose this round. Game. Well, also, the first round spread, it has the most amount of money on it as well. What's as of the, yesterday. What's the spread? Uh, well, I don't know. 13 and a half, I think. Something around there. So there's a 13 and a half point delta, and that makes you believe that they're going to actually just lose the game entirely. I do. I do. 100% I do. We need to send your brain to science. I don't think we do. I think you're seeing more and more upsets in March Madness, and I don't think it's crazy. Uh, last night, 75% of bets were on Howard. The line started off with the other team favored by two. It ended three and a half point favorite for Howard. Howard lost the game outright. Look, we saw last week Long Beach State fired their head coach on Monday. Then they went out and they won the, the, the Big West tournament, right? Yep. There is speculation, whether it's true or not, who knows? Mm. There's speculation that this could be Greg Campy's last season with Oakland. He's been their head coach for a long time. There's How does been Craig rumors know that of him speculation? retiring for a number of years. <laughs> Imagine going out as a head coach, having defeated Kentucky in the first round as a 14 seed as your swan song. <laughs> I'm just saying. Here's what we're going to do. I'm not smug, and I'm not pompous. You're not smug and pompous, but you, you know what you have earned? What? We A victory lap. A victory lap. You want to take a victory lap? Yeah, let's take a little victory lap. Casey, Casey, ch ch change the cameras. Get this victory lap here. Just a little, just a little <clears throat> Hang on. Hold Woo. on. Woo! Woo! little victory lap. Woo! Woo! That's, that's enough. That's enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Oh, Casey's a great, great producer. <laughs> Casey's a great producer. Uh, Greg Sandlin, by the way, dropped just so much knowledge the other day. I, I did not like having uh, Craig on the show. Yeah? Because he was too smart. He made me look dumb by, <laughs> by comparison. I didn't like that. Right? I, I, yeah, I didn't like it. I, I don't want Craig on the show anymore. But uh, I, good listen, call. Good call on the Oakland Golden Battle tested. They went to Cintas. They got to win. Remember, there's probably some takes that we can dig up. Certainly some takes we can dig up from this show about making fun <laughs> of Oakland from, from November. But uh, maybe we should do that. But <laughs> <laughs> congratulations, Golden Grizzlies. You said your text last night was very funny. You should have seen, we were saying, this is unbelievable. This is an incredible performance by whatever that, I forget the guy's name already, uh, that made all the threes. And, you're, and you texted last night, if you think this is good, you should have seen them earlier on in the year. <laughs> it was very funny. Uh, and shout out to Oakland. Anytime I see Kentucky fans uh, in heartbreak, it makes me feel a little bit happier. Um, because I'm a UC fan, and I've seen no happiness in my entire life. But that's it. That's it for March. Uh, I, I am very excited about today. We're going to go over some picks later on. But I'm very, very excited. Today is our day, boys. Today is the day we bankrupt the book. Yeah, I was going to say, it's. I, I was going to open the show and ask, if they're, are they having board meetings over in Las Vegas about the, the hurting that we put on them? I think we all fared very – I haven't gambled in uh, weeks, really. I gambled last week. Um, when we did the live streams of the Big East tournament um, with Xavier. But other than that, I really haven't gambled a lot. I said, you know what? I'm not going to miss out on the fun. I'll, I'll, I'll sprinkle a little coin. Sprinkle a little coin in the, in the account. And uh, I, I, I turned it from – I multiplied it by seven. So it was a fun day yesterday, betting just bull junk. Race to tens, first half over-unders. It was a bunch of bull junk. It was great. It was, you it know was, what I, I was kept, having fun. You know what I kept betting? What? I bet the favorite in each game to score the first basket. And that was unbelievable yesterday. Unbelievable. I don't know if it, it missed, I think, for Gonzaga, ironically. The, the 20 point game was the only time it missed. Oh, that was dynamite. Uh, but that was it. That, that's, that was a fun March Madness day. If we can switch over real quick, real quick to the Reds. Because this is okay. a very serious sports talk show. Drink this is, Everett. This is serious. This is serious. Uh, uh, so the Reds lose 7-6 to six to the Mariners. Spring training doesn't matter. But Ellie De La Cruz did hit a triple. Spencer Steer went 2-4 for four with a home run. Will Benson went 1-3, for three, a walk, and a home run. And you had Mike Ford, who's almost a lock to make the team now. Uh, two home runs yesterday. If this is how the team is going to play without TJ Friedel, without Noel V. Marte, Without Matt McClain, we have hope. We have hope. Nick Kirby and I uh, had a discussion yesterday. It was on Chatterbox Reds. I think it was on uh, YouTube if you want to go check it out. Because I think there's a lot of Reds fans freaking out. A lot. A lot are in a panic. But Nick Kirby ta told me this yesterday. I said, give me one thing, one sentence, one phrase to walk me off this ledge. He said, he said one thing, Ellie De La Cruz. Ellie De La Cruz, I texted my guys this yesterday. Ellie De La Cruz is about to win the MVP. That's going Ooh. to happen. That's going to happen. You might say, what about Shohei? Shohei is going to be gambling on something else. He's out there doing his own thing. I think this story is going to rock his world. I think he's, do, he's going to have a really bad season. Shout out Shohei. Uh, Ronald Acuna, very, very good. But I think Ellie De La Cruz is going to maybe not touch his stolen base numbers from last year, but it's going to be close. I think he's going to lead the league in triples. 80? You think he's going to have 80? No, I said he's going to be close. Okay. That's what I said. I said I don't think he's going to touch so you think half. he's going to get like 60? I think he's going to get like 65. Okay. Yeah. I think he's going to lead the league in triples. I think he might lead the league in doubles. He, he'll hit about 25 home runs. You ready? Ellie De La Cruz, if he's able to figure out the defense at the shortstop position, is going to be your MVP this year. And that is what Reds fans have to look forward to. What do you think his odds are, according to DraftKings Sportsbook, to win the MVP? Plus... 2,500. 40 to 1. So plus 4,000. Plus 4,000. All right. That's a long shot. That's great odds, though. So there's O'Neill Cruz is ahead of him in, in the odds department. That's fine. But you, you mentioned the, 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 the names Ronald Acuna, Mookie Betts, Shohei Otani, Fernando Tatis, Bryce Harper, Freddie Freeman, Matt Olson, Corbin Carroll, Trey Turner, Austin. Fernando will juice again. I'm not concerned about that one. <laughs> And then outside of that, you have uh, a, a bunch of guys that are very good. But he has the same odds as former MVP Paul Goldschmidt. 
That's great. I love Paul Goldschmidt. Right. I feel great about this. Don't freak out yet. I'm freaking out, but I'm going to say publicly right here, I'm trying my best not to. We're going to be okay, guys. We, we have opening day next Thursday, less than a week now. We're going to beat the Nationals. Well, I, I'm going to say we're going to sweep the Nationals. We are going to sweep the Nationals in the opening series, and we're going to start off this season with a bang. Now, if, if they somehow lose to the Nationals, like they lose the series or get swept, then I'm going to be in panic, then the season's over. I, it's so interesting that you are so high on Ellie. And I know a lot of people are because my, the, the source that I normally go to when it comes to uh, the Cincinnati Reds has inferred to me what he was tweeting is that Ellie has looked terrible. That's, of course, is Gordon Whitmire. <laughs> Just a few days ago, two airs by Red shortstop Ellie De La Cruz. One on a high throw to first, another on a routine backhand play that just now in the fourth. He also misplayed a ball yesterday that should have been ruled an arrow. Also, he's 0 for 9 after fattening up on fastball and minor leaguers early. So according to the, the most reputable source covering <laughs> the Cincinnati Reds, Ellie looks terrible. Looks terrible. You know, you know what's funny? I can't def- – I, listen, that, I thought, that's a very serious journalist. He's never in it for the clicks. He, he does his job. He does it the right way. Shout out to Gordo. Um, but, no, I would, I'm going to have to disagree with his uh, smug and pompous tweets. But here's the thing. It, well, what's my quote about um, spring training? It, it fits the narrative it that you only, want. You only use spring training. You never use it to not fit your narrative. That's true universally. Right? If you're a right. Stuart Fairchild fanboy, you're saying, look what he's doing in spring. If you have a lot of faith in Jamer Candelario, Will Benson, you're like, yeah, I mean, it's spring training. Who cares? So the reason I'm bringing that up is spring training is only there to fit your narrative. And what is the tweet that Gordon Wittenmeyer puts out? Ellie De La Cruz isn't very good. That's the narrative he's trying to push. I thought that Reds fans, and this is, once again, coming from a bias source. So every, you guys know this with me when it comes to the Reds. Like, take what I say with a grain of salt. I'm coming from a bias source. Same way that you take with a grain of salt when Trace talks about the Bengals, right? It's coming from a place outside. The difference is, is I'm actually a fan of a rival. I, as I mentioned before, everyone I like, love, respect, Reds fans. So I don't hate the Reds. But here's the thing, and, I, and I'm bringing this on the outside is it's pretty clear. <laughs> like, I thought you guys were, were overreacting to this tweet. I saw Bryce Spalding, love him. He's like, you're the worst, and everyone's going back and forth just, just tweeting at Gordon Wittenmeyer. But at the end of the day, if what I believe is true and that spring's only there to fit your narrative and the narrative that you decide to put out is that the star, right, the guy that they're putting in all their TV promos, getting excited, people excited for the season, Ellie De La Cruz, some people say he could be the best player on the planet. That might be true. I used to say that that can't be true because Shohei Otani's on this planet, but <laughs> Shohei Otani might not be allowed to play baseball anymore soon enough. But he's clearly <laughs> pushing a narrative, right? I, I, I've been trying to hold, hold my opinion on Gordo because I know this is a very serious sports talk show, and I don't want to slander anybody. But... Ever since spring training started, and ever since we signed Josh Harrison and Tony Kemp, there's been the narrative that Ellie De La Cruz specifically and the young rookies, they have to mind themselves here. They have to be careful. Otherwise, Josh Harrison and Tony Kemp are going to take your spots. And that was, that's been the narrative for certain journalists in this city. And I don't understand it. You can't possibly think that. There's no explanation for your rationale. Tony Kemp is a mediocre player. Josh Harrison over the past five years, mediocre. Ellie De La Cruz, despite being mediocre, some might say last year, still has the floor, the potential to be so much better. And this is why I don't get it. If you don't read that tweet and, see, and think that there's at least a little bit of an anti-Ellie narrative in there, you, you haven't been paying attention. And that's why I don't get it. Because, yes, journalists are supposed to be objective. 100%. You're not supposed to be a fan of the team. You're allowed to be critical. If Ellie De La Cruz has... If he ended that tweet with the errors thing, he had two errors in the past two games, and he should, he, they missed one yesterday. 
That's fine. That's what he did. But if you say he's fattening up on fastballs thrown by minor su- league, by sub major leaguers by twelve year olds underhanded, <laughs> <laughs> there's a narrative you're pushing, and you can't say there's not. It also doesn't help that he's a Cubs fan, and that's that's his prerogative. He wants to be a Cubs fan and come in here. That's it. he hosts a Cubs podcast, which is I'm not gonna lie, it's tough. I mean, it's it's tough to do, but. Again, objective. I get the objectivity. You don't want to be a fan of the team that you're covering because sometimes you got to report the hard facts. But there's another journalist in this city who I will name, named Charlie Goldsmith, fantastic. who's the best at what he does. He's fantastic. The best at what he does. And I think Charlie, even though he can't outwardly maybe cheer for these teams because you have to have some objectivity, he is as professional as it gets, and he still writes with uh, a positive outlook, if anything, right? I think that's fair. I think you can write objective facts with a positive outlook. And I think that's what Charlie does. I think he's a very, he's the best journalist in the city by far. I, I don't know who the journalists are, all of them. He's my favorite and he's my, he's my guy, 100%. The goal- but I look, at an, I look at him, I look at the other guy, and I won't name his name anymore. I don't, like, I don't want to name his name. You look at the other guy, and every, every single piece of writing he has is negative. It's, it has a negative connotation, a negative outlook. And I don't understand why. Here's the thing about being a journalist. Is the end goal, of course, is to be as objective as possible. Some are better at that than others. Right? Some can put aside their personal opinion when reporting and, and just sticking to facts. Using, and, and that was his response when all these Reds fans were, were coming at him, going like, I'm just stating facts. It's like, well, you use very, de- you use very uh, definitive, slanted words, fattening up on <laughs> fastballs and stuff like that, to where you're no longer just stating facts. You're, you're putting a hint of your opinion. So if you're unable, because that's the end, that's what you're trying to do. If you're unable to take away your slant, then I think you should lean into it. In all seriousness, right? I, if, if I was a reporter of the Cincinnati Bengals, I would be unable. I would be unable to look at things objectively. I'm a positive person, and I'm a diehard Bengals fan. So everything will come with a positive slant. If you watched the show the last two weeks, I loved every move that they did. Because of course I did. I'm a fan. But it just it, it, it is interesting that they would hire that guy. The Cincinnati Inquirer would hire him. Ah, I don't understand it. I don't understand it. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna dwell on it. They've got Charlie You're- Goldsmith, which is the greatest hire ever. That guy rocks. So shout out to the Enquirer for hiring Charlie because he's a, a professional professional. It's it's it, it's interesting because like when you are a play-by-play broadcaster or a color commentator of like a local team, you're allowed to be slanted, like right? A little bit. You're you're allowed to do that because you are there for the team. So when you're the local newspaper, you can be a little slanted. Dan Hoard's another guy. He he works for the Bengals. He works for the Bearcats. He's he's still objective, right? He he's happy when the Bearcats win. But you still have to put on a professional facade, at least. You're still not even a facade. You're, you still have to put on a professional uh, voice when you're doing these things. And he's phenomenal at it. Dan Horde is, is the best. When the Bengals score a touchdown, it, it's, one of the, it's one of my favorite things to listen to. We are blessed in the city, truly, to have some of the best broadcasters in, in the country. Including Dave. Inclu- including Dave. Dave <laughs> and including Dave. Uh, God bless him when he yells. <laughs> Here's the thing about a Bengals fan when, when, when you're talking about... You figure out who is a diehard Bengals fan by if they like Dave or not. Like, like I think that is the the, the parameter of, and uh, maybe maybe not diehard, but like positive. Because like as a, I love the Dave calls. I love we. They're not calls. He just yells. I have a word for him. This is what me and my friends call them. Yeah. It's a kids show. But we call them, lapgasms. <laughs> we call them Dave Lapgasms because it's just, oh, oh, like right there going down the field. I love Dave. Love Dave. I love, I love Lapham. It is, some, it is sometimes funny. I remember when the Bengals were bad sometime around 2017. Is that right? 2017 is when kind of the wheels started to fall off and they started to reset. It was Mike Nugent, I want to say, was our kicker then. And I remember we were playing the Lions. It was the Lions, I think. It was a meaningless game. 
and, and it was like a 45 yarder for the win. <laughs> and, and Lapham during the kick, it's up, it's going, the wind is blowing. <laughs> he keeps freaking out, and then once it goes through the the upright, oh, he just yells. It's uh, it's, it's great because if you're listening to, it's like a. You know when you're watching a scary movie and when they're going to show you something scary, the the music gets ominous, right? Yeah. Like they're, they're leading you into, like they're getting you, they're teasing you. Like something's about to happen. Get ready for it. Gear up for it. When you're listening to a Bengals game on the radio, you'll hear Dan doing a phenomenal job at explaining, painting the picture Right, he's got his paintbrush out there. He's got Joe Burrow and, and telling you where everyone's moving and everything like that. And in the midst of him just explaining what's going on, you know if it was a good play or a bad play based on if you heard a "oh" from Dave or a "go, go, go." <laughs> like while Dan's like, you'll hear Dave yelling "go, go, go," and Dan still and Burrow drops back like the ball's still in the back field according to dan and dave's already go yeah <laughs> or oh no and he's like did he get sacked oh he got sacked like it lets you know it's like an ominous music in a in a horror picture i love him i absolutely love him there's a i won't mention the other thing uh ad reads casey rue yeah i could do ad reads uh, then nate is very much on this he says we're very late to ad reads every day well i mean as long as we get to him we get to him yeah uh, the uh, the Bearcat Bengals report. Bengals Bengals report. Bengals report. Yeah, sure. Let's talk about Dave, Dave, uh, Dave. Yeah. Brought to you by Encore Technologies. Encore Technologies provides IT solutions for a data centered world with a suite of services from mobile computing to desktop to data center, supporting both centralized and work from home computing modules to improve efficiency and productivity. Lindsay. Productivity. Reed. Oh, productivity. Oh, that's right, guys. Three out of three, one hundred percent. Visit Encore.tech. The path to innovation begins here. And let me tell you about this lovely bottle of water right here. Pawnee water, made right here in Hamilton, Ohio. Uses natural limestone filtration, unlike the artificial processing the other brands use. The result is a healthy alkaline water, it's and healthy. some say it's the best tasting water in the world. In the world. Visit Encore. Oh, <laughs> visit Pawnee oh. Water at P A H H N I water.com so you, to see where you can buy this great tasting water. <laughs> Get my ad reads mixed up. <laughs> uh, and then let me tell you about our other sponsor, Game Time. The Game Time app, it is the best ticketing app in the world. I used it all the time last year to go to Reds games. Uh, last minute shopping for Bengals tickets, last minute shopping for FC games. Um, it also has concert tickets and all that. It lets you see exactly where you're sitting at. The pricing is all up front, and it only takes two clicks. You get your tickets right away. It's one of the best apps that you can get. Um, download the Game Time app today. Use code OTB for twenty dollars off your yeah. first purchase. Terms apply. That's twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms do apply. Redeem code OTB in the game time app to get that promo. So download the game time app. Yeah, please. Uh, also like the stream, like the stream, like the stream. We got stuff on YouTube. If you guys haven't seen it, go check it out. We've got some new stuff. Uh, Casey, outside, go ahead. I was going to say, Casey, it, it's not breaking news. Um, I don't want to go too deep into it, but there was a little bit of Bengals news that I just sent this, uh, this tweet to Casey. Uh, according that uh, the Bengals are, in fact, looking for a veteran cornerback. Uh, former Titans cornerback Christian Fulton turned down an offer from the Bengals, the Broncos, and the Cardinals. He signs with the Chargers. So the Bengals are not getting Christian Fult Fulton. Um, it's just we're not going to go too deep into it. It just means that the Bengals are actively looking into getting more depth in that cornerback room, adding into that secondary. I also saw yesterday that they were talking with linebackers. Yes. Yeah. yeah, they were talking to linebackers. I'm sure that uh, – Depth, not starter, right? Well, I mean, th this could be uh, uh, the last year of Pratt, right? You could probably cut him after this year if he does, in fact, uh, play. And then um, you're going to lose ADG as well next year again. Okay. Uh, we only signed him to a one-year deal. So, yeah, I mean, depth, maybe a developmental piece. Who knows? Um 
terms of corners and what that looks like, Adoree Jackson, that's the guy I, I really hope that they take a stab at. Um, played in Lou Anarumo's system, I believe. So I think they're familiar with each other, and he's a, a guy that would fit the scheme, I think. Presumably they have about – do we ever figure out the money on Trent Brown? No, I don't think that's been out yet. Um, but it was listed at like seven or something like that. Kind of – that's a, that's a that high-end guess. That yeah. So that would mean that the Bengals have like $19 million of fun money filling out these holes. We'll talk with that in the future. We'll get to that in the future. There's not a whole lot of news to report on from there. But they are actively looking at, at pieces. The Bengals, I, we talked about it last week, they, they are quickly filling up every hole that they have. Um, obviously still nose guards there. But it's a pretty shallow roster at this moment. A lot of depth is needed. A lot of depth is needed. Safety is really the only position that has a lot of depth. Uh, wide receivers going forward. still ha- Wide receivers has still has a decent amount of depth. Running, but, like, there's still some depth that needs to be needed, especially on the defensive side. So that's all we're going to talk about the Bengals. We talked enough about the Bengals last two weeks when news was actually being reported. And it's just a reminder, it's March. It is. It's March. It's the round of 64. Another 16 games going on today. Going on today. I was looking at it too, and, and we're about to give some picks here, which I'm very excited for. Gambling segment. So I'm, I'm also I'm also sending Casey a clip from. Uh, we forgot this. We forgot to send this to everybody. I think our internet was terrible uh, when we were trying to when we were trying to do this. Uh, we were in Las Vegas, and I believe Trace asked the chat, "Should he put money on red or black?" So he put a lot of money on what the chat decided, and I'm going to play that clip here in a minute. But. Uh, I, I, there is a women's tournament going on right now as well. We talk about women's basketball. We talk about how, how good it's been this year. Mm-hmm. The ratings have, have surpassed NBA ratings. And Casey, I did just send that to you. Uh, hopefully it gets there in a couple minutes. Right now, I will say this. Women's college basketball is great. The top of women's college basketball, it's some of the most competitive, most fun basketball there is. When it's a bad team playing a good team in women's college basketball... I- it is honestly there. There isn't a worse product. Well, I'm, I'm going to tell you one. This is my favorite spread of the day. South Carolina. This is the women's tournament here, coming yep. off at two, tipping off at two o'clock. South Carolina is taking on 16 seated Presbyterian. Let's play a game. Whose spread is it anyway? What do you think the spread is for number one South Carolina taking on Presbyterian? 36. Nope. Casey, any guesses? Uh, women's spreads are like crazy, aren't they? They're like, so this is what? Uh, number teams? one, South Don't Carol- tell me it's in the 50s. One, one, oh, yeah. Yeah, it's going to be in the 50s, I bet. South Carolina at 2 o'clock today is minus 53 and a half <laughs> against yeah, they're, Presbyterian. They're wild. So I might have to take minus 53 and a half. Could you imagine the sweat? Uh, here's the thing about, um, you know, we – with Chatterbox, we've talked about it a lot. Um, obviously, we're doing the Miami games right now. We get a chance to, to call their softball games. Miami Redhawks have a phenomenal softball team. They lead the country in home runs. They have two girls that are currently leading the country as individuals in home runs. Like Those girls have just as many home runs as like the number two team in the country. It's a, they're, they're an incredible team to watch. But through doing things in high school... I love women's athletics. I love softball. I love women's basketball. Women's basketball and men's basketball are very different. It's it's a uh, women's basketball is it's more artistic. Like it's like they they shoot better. It's 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 prettier at times. A lot of layups, but it, it is prettier at times. The thing about women's athletic is, and I love it. I love it when there is a discrepancy in ability. The games aren't close to competitive no they aren't like if you look at high school girls basketball scores in the first two rounds the scores aren't like what you see in men's that are sometimes like Moeller playing like a talawanda where it's 70 to 30 not a close game the girls scores quite literally go to like 90 to 4 they can't score it's when there's discrepancy, <laughs> there's it's a lot. Of di- it's a lot of discrepancy. Like there, we'll see a softball game. We, we saw a softball game last week where Miami softball won 16 to two, and every single girl was just hitting a home run. Like it was, it was great. <laughs> it was, it was, it is what it is. Will you be betting on that game? On Miami softball? No, no, no. On oh no, no. Fifty three and a half no. doesn't entice you. No, I, I, I love it. Can we start doing bets? Can we do a couple bets? Or do you want to do something else? Uh, I, I certainly need I would that. like to see this video. Okay. okay, okay. so let me set up the video. So we Trace, I believe, in one of the streams, I don't know which stream it was, we asked the chat, put this on red or black. 
We're going to put an X amount of dollars on red or black. And the chat, I'm not going to lie, I don't want to spoil what happens in this video, but you kind of get called out. Roll it. Here we go. This is all because of the chat. Can't say I never did anything for the chat. Here we go. Here we go. I knew I could never. I knew I could never trust the chat. I knew. Was that a single zero roulette table? Yeah, no, I think it was a triple zero roulette. No, I think that was a single zero. I don't think so. Was it? Good. Play, play the K K K Casey. Put play the video again, and I just just go back to where they were betting. We were we were at with we were at all the ones with three. Let's see when it, when, the, when the bet you see the bet on the table. You see Where's the bet the on the table. The bet on the table. Yeah, because then you'll see the zeros at the end of the other table. So he, he pans down to the bet. Where's the zeros? <laughs> I think it's a. I, I think, think I think it was two. I think it's two. Okay, because when it's three zeros, they're all together. There's literally just a giant green portion of the of the table. Ah, tough, tough. So the chat, the chat steered. I think that was a hundred dollars. Um, tough loss for our boy. It was very funny. We didn't. We haven't really talked much about it. Uh, we have so much footage that it's honestly scary. But there, when we were in Vegas. We had a guy, and I don't know if I've told this story, but I'm going to tell it now. We had a guy named Taylor with us. I was having a great time at a blackjack table. A great time. It was me and Twitter Greg. Uh, if you don't know Twitter Greg, he's Reds Daily. He's a superstar. Me and him were sitting, at, were sitting at the table. We were playing blackjack. Everything was right in the world. I think I'd won six hands in a row. I was up money. Taylor, one of the, one of the camera professionals we mm -hmm. hired to go mm -hmm. on this trip with us, he decides he's going to go sit down at the table with us. And I said, okay. I don't, like, I don't like when it happens, but I understand it. Uh, we were the only two at that table. The vibes were high. We were, we were, having, we were making jokes with the dealer. It's, I don't know if you ever play, if you go to a casino and play blackjack. It's always fun when the, when the dealer is riffing with you. It just makes it so much more fun. Even when you're losing and the dealer is having fun, it's, it's fun. So we were having a good time. Taylor comes up to the table, and his rationale is as soon as we lose a hand, he's coming in. So off the bat, he's cheering for us to lose so he can get in. He gets in. I lose 10 hands in a row. 10 hands in a row. Twitter Greg loses six hands in a row. I walk from the table. I'm done. I retired. And every hand I lost after like the sixth one, Taylor kept laughing. He destroyed the vibes of Las Vegas. Destroyed my vibes. I was going to be up a million dollars. Instead, I walked away with nothing. That's just one Vegas story I had. What was your biggest takeaway? As a guy who likes to go to the casino, a guy who likes to gamble quite a bit, were you, because I, I hyped it up as like everything's a casino there. Yeah, it is. Literally every, every, every store, every shop, there is something to gamble on, which is very fun. I, it was, the Grand Canyon was my favorite part of the trip because I really do think it blew my mind a little bit. How cool it was, how infinite it was. Vegas is by far my second favorite thing. I thought it was awesome. I thought it was incredible. You, we walked, we, I walked up and down the strip a lot, just looking at the, all the lights and the buildings. It was, it was incredible. We were about... I want to say 50 miles away and it's in the middle of the desert and it, we were, we were driving in at night and you, can see, and you see the yep. light just shine up in the sky. Like it's an alien sending a, a beam down to yep. earth. It is so cool. And then you, and then you get over uh, a little, we, we got over like a little mountain. I don't know if it, a little hill, whatever it was. And, and you see the whole, the whole landscape is covered in lights. It was incredible. It was by far my second favorite thing. It was, uh, I flew out there at night and yeah, you're just flying over just darkness. Yeah. Like when you fly over, um, the Eastern side of the United States at night, there's a lot of lights cause there's a lot of towns. Um, you get over to the Western side, you can go far, you can go long distances without seeing a town Yeah. and you're flying over there and you're just like, Whoa. There's nothing below us. Then you just see this giant bright light. I was amazed. I, I told, I've told this story before. I went to Vegas one time for one night. The plan was we were going to stay a night in Vegas, then drive to Los Angeles, which was the true meaning of the trip. We went to Dodger Stadium. We we're supposed to go to Angel Stadium. Uh, the Angel Stadium story is a, a tale for another time. But we stay the night in Las Vegas. I pull, we, we arrive at 10 P their time, right? Yeah. 10 P. Las Vegas time. 
And I start looking up because I'm like, man, it's going to take us a while to get off the plane. It's going to take us an hour probably to get to our hotel. I'm going to have to, we're going to get ready. Like I Googled, I, this was a true Google. I pulled out my little phone, tap, 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 tap. And I said, what time do things close in <laughs> Las Vegas? Sent that off to the Google machine. What a moron. <laughs> Nothing ever closes. It just, it's open. It's just open. We're also, I was also amazed by people just, I don't know if you saw this when you're in Vegas, people just walking around with a 12 pack of beer. Oh yeah. And just drinking like, like, like just walk, like not taking drinks from the, the bars, just literally just walking around with a 12 pack of beer, walking down the strip. There was also instances of drug paraphernalia that was being out very much out in the open. I didn't, I didn't see one cop. Didn't see one cop in Las Vegas. I, it is interesting when you go, like we went into Caesars and or, uh, yeah, it was Caesars. Caesars was incredible. You walk down there and mm -hmm. it's like a purple tunnel. Mm -hmm. You like legit, you could stand there for 10 hours. You'd never know what time it was. It's just the, the, they, the way they do the lights and everything. It's how all casinos, I'm pretty sure, operate. Yeah, no windows. You don't, no so windows. You don't, so you don't know. It's incredible. I, I, I thought it was The all, sports I, books are cool. I don't know if you like went by we the went sports books. We went to Circa. We went to Circa and that was by far my favorite sp uh, casino we went to. And that had a very big sports book. Yeah. Uh, Caesars, Caesars and... Uh, I was there for one night. I'd like to go back. If you if you gamble on enough of those apps, you will get free rooms and stuff like that. Oh, I've I've had like a week out to uh to Vegas just just burning a hole in my pocket. I don't think I'm made for Vegas just because um don't know if I can contain myself when it comes to gambling. I need a wallet man. I, I, wallet oh, man. I needed a wallet man. I needed a wallet man. My wallet man failed All me. Right. Uh, Evan, real quick, last last story. When you're out there too, not Vegas, but right before Vegas, when we were in the Grand Canyon. There's no light pollution there. So if you don't know what light pollution is, it's if you live in near a, a big city or uh, any, really anywhere near a city, you're going to have... You won't see stars. You won't right? see stars because it's, there's all the lights around you. It's, there, it's blocking it. When you're out in the Grand Canyon, we just got out of our car like five times and we just look up at the stars. At my, my, shout out to my guy, Evan. He was, he was walking me through it. He gave me an app, a star app. And, you just, and you just look up in the whole sky. The entire sky is filled with stars. It was could, beautiful. You could could you see the Milky Way? Like yeah, the, you could the, see everything. Yeah. You could literally see every single thing up there. It was incredible. It was I like I like when you go out and there's no light pollution. And you can see like the strand of the Milky oh, Way yeah. of the galaxy, and you're just like, wow, that's incredible. It is nature's nature is uh, is phenomenal. It is phenomenal. How did our bracket do yesterday, Casey? All right. Yep. Let's get into the you sports talk. talk about our bracket. Yeah. Let, let's pull it up. Um, Let's see. I'm looking at Mark Fetter's bracket, actually. Sorry. Uh, is he, Fetter's bracket's on fire, is it? 99.9 .9 percentile so far. There you go, Mark. He, 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 Mark, he about every Mark, Mark does is win. I, I, I say this with all love and respect. Mark, you don't – I know they've met – you don't seem – because you just win. You just win. It doesn't seem – it doesn't seem – it seems paranormal. It, 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 it's incredible. You, you, Mark Fetter's is a superstar. He is. Sean Connery. He says. is a superstar. And uh, our bracket was 45.5%. That's pretty terrible. Yeah. I will say, shout out to Lindsay real quick. She was uh, two and three in her picks yesterday. That's tough. <laughs> Got to be tough for you. Well, not as tough as when Nevada lost for you. So. Mm. What a shot. Yeah, I mean, that was shot. just a shot. The sparring from the between you two is incredible. Lindsay, I'm incredibly excited. As you are a Cincinnati Bearcat student, I'm incredibly excited to, to be a Cincinnati Bearcat student tonight. As, yeah. I, as I go to the freshman bars, as she tells me, I'm, I'm going to a concert tonight on, in Clifton. And when I told her where I was going, Lindsay said, oh, that's where all the 18-year-old and fresh, <laughs> freshmen hang out. And I'm going, what's the matter? Man, they're all eight, like, like they're, they're 22 to 18. They all look the same to me. Like, it's, it's like, it's, they, they're younger than me. So what's it matter? That's correct. <laughs> uh, I, I, Lindsay, will you be paying $150 to go see Travis and Jason Kelsey? I actually did pay $100. To did go. you really? Going You're going? I'm going with my best friend. Yeah. Because I was going to get a student ticket, which are free, but she graduated last year, so she wouldn't be able to go with me. So I just paid with her. And the student tickets were like a lottery anyways, except I got kicked off the website twice before I could actually get my ticket. That's a real shame. But they I were probably like, trying to save you money. That's what they were probably that trying to do. That is a sign that I probably should have took, but hundred dollars is a lot. I listen, I, I love Jason Kelsey a lot. And I, and I love his family. I would never pay a hundred dollars for that. That seems like a waste of money. And I know there's like a football, I think there's a spring football game attached to it. 
I'm not, I just I just don't have interest in it. Uh, well, I think got, they're doing like two shows, and they're doing like they're bringing guests, and they're like doing things within it. So I don't know if that's why, but interesting. If they bring Taylor Swift, then I take it all back. It's worth a hundred dollars just to see her. But it's a steal then. It's a steal. It's maybe a steal. she sing, Maybe she sings a song, the Pump It Up song. You gotta pump it up. Mm. <laughs> that's it. All right, bets, please. Oh, by the way, I I, I mentioned uh, the other bra- the the other trending team that everyone's like this is an upset alert similar to mcneese state because they won 30 games and everything like that i don't even know if it's mcneese state mcneese but uh the other team that i saw i saw rick broering tweeting about this was uh james madison james madison is a team that is like one and two against quad one and two teams 27 and 0 against quad four and everyone's like james (laughs) madison's gonna beat wisconsin We'll see. I mean, it's college basketball. Anything can happen. But that is a very trendy pick to take James Madison. Uh, McNeese wasn't very fruitful. Wasn't fruitful whatsoever. Was not fruitful. Uh, outside of that, I got a ton of picks. Did okay. we finish our bracket talk? We didn't finish our bracket talk. That, so we finished 45%. Is that it, right? We're, do we have any of our final four teams left? Uh, let's see. We had North Carolina. I think we have all four left. I think we're good still. Yep. All right. My bets today, and I've got a lot of them. We'll start with the first game, and that is in one, a little less than an hour now, which is f- phenomenal. Uh, who's doing an Elliott impression in the chat? Anyway, I have Northwestern plus three and a half. I also have Northwestern first basket uh, to be the method of first basket, two-pointer for Northwestern. That's like plus 145. Take it. Free money. I also have the first half under in that game. I think it's like 60-something. Ride it. I have Colgate. Plus 14 and a half against Baylor. 14-3. Love it. Tra- Trace um, was was being a little degrading yesterday to you when you were giving out picks, and he's just like, that's a, a lock the other way. How did those fare? Because obviously Oakland won. Well, my biggest and one, North, my whale play yeah, was, State, right? was I had NC was, State. was Nevada. That's right. My whale play was Nevada. So in the end, he, he got the last laugh. I did have uh, Oakland. I did have Oakland. You had Oakland and NC State. Uh, I think those cancel out then, the, the whale play. I, I don't, Nevada was such a, a, such a disgusting loss that I don't think I'll ever recover from that one. That was a permanent scar. Uh, Colgate plus 14.5. I also have the over 138.5 in that game. UAB. Uh, taking on San Diego State, I have San Diego State minus six and a half. I think a lot of people are going to be on UAB, so we're going to fade the public. Uh, Western Kentucky taking on Marquette, I might put my life savings on Marquette minus fourteen and a half. I'm not entirely sure how they were to how they would be to, to to lose that. I don't think there's a world. I also have Marquette again, first basket method two pointer for Marquette. I think it's like plus one ten. UConn minus twenty six and a half against Stetson. UC played Stetson. Stetson's terrible. Very, very, very bad. UConn's going to win this game by 40. It might be the biggest blowout of the tournament. So yesterday, we, we, have, we have a Bible when sure. it comes to gambling here. Um, shout out to Trace. Trace, Trace is the one that, that bestowed it upon us. He's our Joseph Smith. Um, it did very well yesterday. The system, as we allude to. They currently, currently a system play. Is taking the Stetson Mad Hatters at plus twenty six and a half. Really? Yes. Yes. Really. I- <laughs> <laughs> How funny would that be if UConn were to lose to Stetson? Want to get a little? St- I did put him in a parlay, but I I did <laughs> alternate spread plus thirty five. You know so. it's you know it's funny about UConn. I've used the same joke when talking about my bracket because we all you know at this time of the year you got to do the the small talk, right? How's your bracket looking? Got any upsets? You got went into all the all the little conversations that we have, small talk. Um, I have found a joke that is batting one point zero zero. It's batting a yeah. thousand, and that is when people ask me um, who I have to win it all. Just a simple joke. I go, I'm, I went out on a limb. I see no one taking UConn. I've got UConn. I, I know, I know, it's a little crazy, and I just do this like long tangent about how I'm going <laughs> out on a limb picking UConn. No one's seeing it coming. And uh, it hits every time. It, 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 it's batting a thousand. It's batting a thousand. I love it. Uh, continuing on my long slate of games, uh, we have New Mexico, Clemson. I'm going to take New Mexico. I am a little scared with all these Mountain West losers, but uh, I think New Mexico is a better team. I watched Clemson play a couple times and they stink. 11 over a six on that one. I have Auburn crushing Yale by 14 points. Yale's not bad, Yale's not terrible. 
Uh, they can run up and down the floor a little bit, but I'm going to take Auburn. We have Florida crushing Colorado. I, that'll be my might be my play of the day today. Money line minus one fifteen. I do have Florida again. First method basket two pointer. Uh, I'm going to keep going down my line because this is what I got. I have Alabama minus nine and a half against Charleston and Pat Kelsey, the elder grad. But what I'm also going to do, I'm sprinkling a little bit on money line as insurance for Charleston. So plus 360 Charleston money line, and then uh, that's for a half unit, and then a regular unit for Alabama minus nine and a half. I don't think there's a world where there's a middle there. Uh, Longwood versus Houston. It's our last chance for the phallic play, right? Uh, I think it's our last chance to continue that streak. I'm going to take Longwood plus 23 and a half. I don't think Houston's going to score a ton. That's the, that's the only reason behind that. I think Houston puts up maybe 60 points today, and I think Longwood gets to 40. So plus 23 and a half there. I do have Wisconsin beating James Madison. I don't. I, I'm not. I'm going to go against the the, the fun pick there. We're going to go uh, James Madison. Or sorry, Wisconsin. Have you, have you looked at the system because you're 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 pulling some you're pulling some sisty wisties. I I do I do I did go I did know that going into it I didn't I know I was okay. on the right side a couple things. I'm not betting the TCU Utah State game. Not touching it. Don't like it. That'll just be a fun game. Uh, and finally, as everybody knows, on X.com, I sent this tweet out. I put a, a parlay. Um, I put a parlay with Michigan State, Duquesne, NC State, and Grand Canyon. All money lines. Five to win $320, $320, I believe. It's currently on the last leg. And I did that for a reason. I had the first three legs on the day one so I could see my cash-out option for day two. They've given me my cash-out option. So if I were to cash out now, it's five dollars to win ninety-one dollars. I don't like it. I don't like that cash out. If it was one fifty, I would have cashed it out. But I think my only plan now, I've gotten a lot of good advice on X.com. I think my only plan now is to let it ride. It's five dollars. I'll put some money on uh, uh, St. Mary's money line minus two twenty. But that is my biggest play. That's the most important thing I have today, and it is the last game on the slate. Everybody, please support Elliot and bet Grand Canyon. Uh, plus 180 money line. That's my long slate. Good luck, boys. <laughs> following that. The, the 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 system which hit very well yesterday. I think it only had one loser. I think it only had one loser. Um, Trace's system, our system here at Chatterbox. Um, currently, these change throughout the day, but at the current moment, Colgate the, the toothpaste is a system at 12:40 plus 14 and a half. Um, the Stetson Mad Hatters close. I said that they were a system. They're yeah. close. It's very. It's on the edge, the tippy tippy toes. Um, so look out for Stetson Mad Hatters to cover twenty six and a half. Um, you've also got. It looks like Wisconsin system. Yep. Minus five and a half, and then the big one is unfortunately for your parlay, St. Mary's five and a half is a big system play. I saw that, but can we have magic one time? Can I get lucky once? I deserve this after Nevada. I'm glad, I deserve it. I'm glad that the system finally broke you. Because you fought us. You, 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 the college you, football, it didn't work. You, you can't, picked your spear it up. Was you, a got ba- the, you, it, got your, you got your, <laughs> your shield here, and you fought us. You pushed us back on the system, but we eventually broke through the line. We eventually <laughs> officially got through there, and you're a believer, though you don't believe in it enough. College football, you can't tell me that it was a failure this year. It did not work objectively. The system failed. Failed. I bet you it was right more than it college was. basketball. It's proven me right more times than not. So that's why I trust it for college basketball. I say I, I also say this when it comes to gambling because this is what these days are about. I don't care about the Baylor Colgate game unless I threw some sprinkled some scratch on it. Um, I like when I get on TikTok and every once in a while, just scrolling through TikTok, you know, tick tick tick, tock tock tock. And uh, I'll see a bet. I'll see some, you got to bet this in March Madness. You got to do this in March Madness. And I'll see that on Sunday. And come Tuesday, Elliot will be like, hey, you got to be hitting these bets. And it's like directly from these TikToks that I see. So then I like, and then I go like, well, <laughs> if that's it. And then I go look at the system, which um, is fading the public. Um, I'll go look at that. And it'll be the opposite side. And it's just like, oh, man. I can, it's, if anytime I see a TikTok trendy bet, I'll see it come through. I, I, I'll hear it from Elliot two days later. So I like that. Casey Rue? Do I have any? You got any locker, locker walkers? I mean, the, the big locker one walkers? was the Wisconsin one for me. 
Um, just looking back at all the, the picks I got here. Uh, I got okay. San Diego State, of course. Um, I don't have – I don't really have anything else besides Wisconsin. I guess Nebraska. Those are my three. I I do like Nebraska. I do like Nebraska. Yeah, Nebraska is one of my picks. And I honestly, I went through and picked every single game just like we all do. But I went through and did alternates for every single game just about just Mm -hmm. to see what I could come up with. Except for the three I just mentioned, I kept those three. Everything else, I did alternate totals, um, unders on all those totals, and the most that you could get for your total. So, like, just as an example, um, the Northwestern Florida Atlantic game, I have 151.5 as the under. Mm -hmm. And I just parlayed all those other games together. I have a couple uh, alternate spreads because I have, like, Grambling State at 35 plus points like that in this parlay specifically but oh i did i did put 15 on uh grambling state money line that is 15 to win 300 i i took one of my uh boosts that i got from DraftKings that gives you uh yeah like a i guess it's a free bet back or your your money back if you lose so that's what i did i put some money on um long or not longwood uh is it longwood yeah yeah longwood i did that for longwood just just for the memes i do have a parlay uh, I've got a couple, actually. The way your face lights up when you're talking about betting is is, is all inspiring. Thank you. I, I do. It's, it, it makes me feel special. San Diego State minus 7.5. Nebraska minus 1.5. St. Mary's minus 5.5. And, and Wisconsin minus 5.5. 25 to win 377. I'm just trying a different way to find a winner in that St. Mary's Grand Canyon way, that, uh, that game tonight. I'm going to try to find a winner at, at some point in it. I'm going to be betting uh, on both sides in different in different ways. So I'll, I'll find out uh, later tonight what I do after after Miami baseball. But I, I'm excited. I this is this is special for me. This is the best time of the year. We all get together. We all lose our money responsibly. We don't lose more than our than, than our means. We have fun. That's what this is about. March Madness isn't about the money you you, you wager. It's about the friends you make along the way. Did you see the line on Saturday uh, for North Carolina, Michigan State? I don't know if you saw this yet. Four and a half? It was like two and a half. And was it? It's been bet down to four. But I thought that was an inter- I thought the line was going to be like eight and a half. So. I might bet Izzo again. I might, I might, I might, I might be Sparty Warty. Might be I think, Sparty I think Warty. you have to go Sparty Warty. Might be Sparty Warty. UC is, I think, a four and a half point favorite against uh, the, 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 the Bradley on Saturday. Good luck to the Bearcats. That's a game I probably won't be watching, but I wish them well on their quest to win the National Invitational Tournament. I think that's what that's called still. Yep, NIT. That's what it stands for. So shout out there. I like whenever you bring up the NIT, at some point someone will tell you that uh, we'll be like, it used to be bigger than the NCAA tournament. Yeah, that is, that's always a fact. That's always a fact they bring up. And that's Which, it, like, uh, for a while there, the NCAA tournament didn't have that large bids, and that's why they, they said that, is yeah. you had to win your tournament. You had to win your conference to, to get into the tournament. Like, back when John Wooden won, like, 11 straight, when he had Lou Alcindor, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, like, when they had that guy, yeah. who, who apparently was pretty good at basketball, um, made it pretty easy to win championships. They were literally just, there was, like, what, I think 32 teams, 20, like 16 teams maybe? Like you had to win like three games in the tournament. I think they were like 25 or something like that. But yeah, well, I, it can't be an odd number. But 20, right. I think it was, dude. I think it was really? 25 when I looked it up. I'm almost certain it was. It said 25 yesterday because I had the same discussion um, with my buddies. Uh, also, who does Dayton play on? I'm going to be hammering Arizona minus 8.5. We haven't really do- dove into the Dayton thing. And I know you don't want to because it brings up some bad wounds. But how the hell? Because I was I was cutting grass during that. How the hell did that transpire? I, because, I, like I said, like I I I'm I'm checking the scores right. I sprinkled a little scratch on the game, and then all of a sudden I look at it and I'm just like, ah, that game's over. Eight minutes left, nine minutes left. It's a 17 point game. And then I cut grass for 45 minutes, whatever it took me, and I look at my phone and Dayton won. And I just see a text from Elliot, Elliot Reary that says, I'm going to go take a walk. I watched every second of the game. In, in, in the last 10 minutes, Nevada became a different team. They played scared. They, they weren't playing like they played in the first, uh, the first half and then the first half of the second half. It was disgusting. It, w- it was a team that just, I think, similarly to how UC blew it, 
you try to stay, you're trying to play both sides. You're trying to score a little bit, but you're trying to also make sure you wind down that clock as much as possible on every single possession. And I think when you try to do that, it, it makes you play a different style of basketball. It was, it was, they were, they were turning the ball over. It was getting sloppy because you're trying to rush at the end of the each shot clock. You're trying to, you're trying to wait 25 seconds or 20 seconds and then right. you go. And then once you try to go, it's like, all right, I got to go, I got to go. And then you're throwing the ball everywhere. So, and that's what I think it was. Dayton, and also Dayton didn't miss a shot in, this, in that seven-minute stretch. They, I think there was a point where they just hit three straight threes, and it was, just, it, was, it was heartbreaking. What were the top three games from yesterday? Top three the games. Best, the best game has to be Kentucky. Oakland. Oakland, because the shots that were falling, falling yep. in that game were incredible. It's, every once in a while, a game... When you describe a game, sometimes the, the, the highest praise is something as simplistic as this game's awesome. Yeah, and it, there's nothing better than you're, you're you're texting about different games, so many games going on. You know, you do this in NFL, you do this uh, March Madness, you, you you do this college football Saturday, where every once in a while you just get a text and just go, "Are you guys watching this? This is incredible," or "This game is nuts." Those are the best texts because you only do that when a game is truly. Yep breathtaking when it is truly like oh my god this is this is great television and that's what oakland kentucky was because every time kentucky would hit a shot oakland would come back it was, it was a great game it was a great game the, that was one the second game obviously was nevada dayton. nevada dayton okay the third game i think it's close between uh, kansas sanford kansas sanford and i would have duquesne byu duquesne byu is pretty competitive all the way through yeah I, it just I, happened so early in the day I love the early in the day games. I, I need buzzer beaters. I, why are there no buzzer beaters anymore in the first round? I need them back. Also, I found it was a, one of the weird phenomenons yesterday. The nets weren't like, they weren't stretched out enough. None of them were. So they would make a swish and then the ball would get stuck in the net. Mm. I thought that was weird. I, I've never seen that before. Sometimes with these uh, March Madness courts, I guess, uh, you, it, the, the rims are a little stiff or whatever. And then I guess... I, I've never seen it where the nets, like the ball doesn't go through. And that, that was the case yesterday. They kept constantly having to uh, get knock the ball out after a made shot. That was strange. I hope they fix that today. Uh, outside of that, the worst games, obviously, were all the blowouts. I think the worst game by far. The Tennessee far, game was, was. Tennessee game was ugly. The Tennessee game, I thought, was the worst game. Texas-Colorado State was horrible. I don't, if you watched any part of that game, I feel sorry for you. I, I watched. I, I, want, I want to say I watched. 27-11. Like, Five minutes sporadically throughout, and I kept just looking up and like, oh, Colorado State hasn't scored yet. Colorado State hasn't scored in five minutes, ten minutes, fifteen minutes. They just didn't score. Tennessee St. Peter's sucked because it just was. It was never competitive. Never. Tennessee jumped out ten to two, and then it was twenty to five, and then like it just like the game was just didn't matter anymore. I saw someone tweet, there must have been a lot of technicals in that game. Cause, oh, I didn't see that. Because people said, I, I keep flip, flipping back to Tennessee, St. Peter's, and every time I do, Tennessee's at the line with nobody <laughs> with nobody in there, another technical shooting. So, uh, I don't know. I didn't watch the game. I, saw, I, I, I bet on Tennessee to get to the first to 10. After that happened, see you later. Gonzaga was terrible. That game stunk right from the tip as well. Yeah. So, I don't know. I, I want a better day today. I want a better day today. I, I thought yesterday was fine. It was you fine. Got, you got an upset. You got an upset with which was was also a great game. Um, you got a controversial call. Yeah, and that's that's what capped off the night. You got an early upset. Um, technically, Color Oregon was an upset, even though they were favored. And you had the comeback. Um, yeah, and you had a big comeback. The only thing we didn't see was a buzzer beater. Was a buzzer beater. I need a buzzer beater. Okay, I need it. I don't know who's going to give it to me, but I need it. So. Most most likely on upset alert today. Great question. I do think I do like Grand Canyon. I do think okay. I do think the trendy ones are James Madison and Grand Canyon. 100%. Those those are the trendy. Whenever ones. Whenever you get a five twelve, it's going to be trendy. Uh, Watch, I do, you, good. I'll go out on a limb. Yeah. I'll, I'll I'll take a step out on the plank. I'll take tip tip tip, and I'll go uh, Colgate. I'll go Colgate. Really? That's that's yeah. I don't. I, I no, don't. Nothing behind it. I saw it on on the system. Colgate. Sure. It seems like they make the tournament every year. It seems sure. like they play Baylor every year. Uh, I I I, I, would, I would love that if Colgate were to win. I would love that. I do think if if there was one big one and people aren't going to like me for saying it, I do think Purdue has a chance to lose. 
I don't. No. I do. I think they do. You know what's funny is is I've said this now for two months. People just keep assuming that Dallas eventually is going to get over that hump in the in, in the NFL. Like, why do they keep losing in the postseason? People said the same thing about Kentucky. No way Kentucky loses again early on, and they did. And I've I've hitched my wagon to. There's no way that Purdue t- takes an early bounce again. <laughs> There's no way. Everyone's making fun of them. Same way that everyone makes fun of the Cowboys. Same way that everyone makes fun of Kentucky. Same way that everyone makes fun of yada, 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 yada. In, in, in the MLB, it's the Dodgers and the Yankees. I've hitched my wagon to Purdue saying there's no way. There, simply, there is no way that they lose in the first two rounds again. No way. But they probably will. <laughs> do you think I listen? I, I I hope so. Do you think there's a world, a world where Vermont beats Duke? Because that was another one I had circled. I don't think Duke's been that good this year. I don't think they're great. They got Filipowski, and he tackles fans. But other than him, do I think the Catamounts will? The uh, Catamounts. Catamounts. No. That's fair. That's fair. I don't think Yale's beating Auburn. I do think New Mexico's beating Clemson. That's an eleven six. I do think that will happen. Fun fact about the Vermont Catamounts. You know, Catamount is uh, just another name for a, a cougar. Really? Or a mountain lion. Really? Yeah, there's a bunch of names for the same animal. I didn't know that. I've been, by the way, I've been to Vermont. Have you been to Vermont? I have not been to the Green Mountain State. Vermont is very fun. I like it's Vermont. It's very, 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 very pretty, apparently. Very, right? very beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. We went there to ski, and it was like a giant snowstorm, and I want to say there was legitimately eight feet of snow when we went. Noah Kahn says that's the reason he's mean, is he grew up in Vermont. Really? That's what he says in the song. Stick season. Right. Uh, I, lo- I love Noah Khan, by the way. That whole album. Fantastic. <laughs> I like music. I don't know. I love music, too. Is that it? Casey, got anything else? Casey? Oh, uh, yeah. We, no, we did forget something. Casey don't, sent don't me a screenshot it. yesterday. Don't do it. Uh, he sent me a picture yesterday. We were all talking March Madness. I got, we got a four TV setup watching all these games. Casey sends me a picture of a soccer game. It was a pretty entertaining soccer game, too. I believe they won it at the death, or they tied it at the death, right? Yeah, they, they tied it in extra time. The men's team. We're talking about the men's team here. So that was, uh, is that, they were, they were basing that on um, aggreg- aggregate? Is that what was going on there? Why, were, why, was, everybody pit- why was everybody pumped that they tied it? Because then it goes into extra time. Like oh, they, the, did, they the, won it in extra time then? Yeah. Okay, yeah, I, I, the thought, I thought it was periods. an aggregate thing. So Casey was watching soccer yesterday while the rest of the world was watching March Madness. But that's okay. Yeah, I mean, I only needed two, I needed two things to happen, and neither thing happened in March Madness yesterday. I needed Kentucky to win or to just – I needed them to cover. I needed them to cover. They didn't cover, obviously. Yeah. They didn't even win. And I needed Kansas to cover. And they let, they let Sanford come back and, and uh, make it a close, close game. game. And it just I, – I was I kept I kept live betting Sanford last night, money line, and I kept getting beat. I was so close. I got up to a, a plus twelve hundred, I think, at the end. It was my final. You live called bet. me a pervert for my live bet. Yeah, because well, yours, I mean, you was, were sharp, your, yours was in the final thirty seconds. You yes, said. yes, and it was it was wild. I was a, that was a silly bet. Well, I mean, like they in what world were they going to win by like two? <laughs> right. I mean, because they're going to foul. Yeah. Right. They're always going to foul unless they run out of time. That's true. That's true. It's you know I, I've said this about betting. Ever since it's become legalized in, in Ohio, which is what now, 13, 15 months, live betting is the devil. It and the, the reason devil. it's it the devil. devil is because when you hit a live bet, you are so vindicated as being the smartest person ever. You don't do this, like, I guess you kind of do this when, when you bet pregame. You see a spread, you know, Bengals minus six. Muskies plus four, you bet it, it hits. Yeah, I kind of saw that coming. But when you, ha- when you do a live bet, you have a very specific reason. College basketball, a uh, favorite is losing, and it gets to even money. They're down 10 to a 12 seed, five seeds playing a 12 seed. And it's even money. And you're like, dude, that 12 seeds hit four. 45% of their threes. There's no way that continues. I'll take whoever on the live money line. It's going to hit. It's plus money. And then it does, and you're vindicated. The game's over, and you're like, I'm so smart. I mean, how, <laughs> that was free money. How could no one see that Duke was going to come back against Vermont? 
How could no one see that? But then there's times like last night, more often than not, like the, the, the book cooks this into the recipe. They're not, they're not idiots when it comes to live betting. Just like last night, there were several people that are watching that Kentucky-Oakland game. Oh, yeah. And they're going, Oakland's hitting every single shot. Uh, there's no way this continues. Kentucky's far too good to lose to Oakland. So you take Kentucky on the live money line. Doesn't hit. It's, that's why it's the devil. Is because when you win, it just cements, it, it, it uh, reinforces bad behavior. It reinforces something, which is live. Like you should just make your bets based on what you know pregame and don't take a new con- information and just let it go. Because if you live bet, if you win, you're going to think that you are the smartest person in the room and you're just going to do it more in the future. And the books, they cook in. They're, they're not idiots. They, they allow live bets because it's profitable. But it's so much fun. It's, it's the so, best. It's, it's so much best. fun. It's so much fun. It's the best. Uh, Casey, real quick, uh, I, 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 I had a comment on the live betting thing too, but... I, I think people in the chat are wondering uh, if, if we can do an FCC preview before the season starts. Season, it's already started. What, what do you mean? The season's already began, Elliot. What's the record? The record, they're not. They haven't lost a game. They're like two and two or two. Or two zero oh and two. Yeah, two zero oh and two. two. Yeah, something like that. So, are, do you think that puts them in a good position to win the MLS Cup or the uh, what's the the Night Shield? What is? What the supporter it, shield? The sword? The supporter shield. So they have a good chance to win the sword. It's a shield, but... Do they have a good chance? I mean, they're third in the who's, East who's, standings Who's been right the now, standout so. player so far for FC Cincinnati? I'm, I guess it's our back line. I mean, they've been, they've been playing good defense. What are your Not thoughts so on that reporter uh, that got... Laurel. That Laurel. Lo- Laurel Failer. Uh, Laurel, who I, lost her credentials. You know, I, I think people... Um, a lot of people are taking her side on it. I don't know all the details, really, other than that she was banned for two weeks, revoked her credentials for communicating with players, coaches outside of the um, outside of the, what, what's allowed. Yeah, the means or whatever. Uh, yeah, they mean. I, 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 the means. Now, um, I think a one-time offense would be kind of ridiculous to give her a ban, but this was something that they have said has happened multiple times. So. I don't know what you want to make of that, what you will. Um, I, think it's, mo- I think it's preposterous how they suspended her. Absolutely preposterous. I don't understand it. Uh, FC Cincinnati seems like it's a team that, and at least what I've seen so far, they're all for that kind of stuff, and I guess they're not. So they're not for good journalistic. Yeah, ethics. I mean, I, in, one, in one hand, it's like, do you want people to cover your team? and to give it exposure because they're competing with two really big franchises here in Cincinnati. And if they want their sport to grow, if they want the, the team to grow, you want them to be covered, not just in those sanctioned areas. You want reporters to go out and uh, get quotes um, from players and coaches and whatnot. And um, whether they're named or unnamed yeah. sources. And then at, at the same time, though, if she's broken the rules and been reprimanded for it or told it goes not both to do ways, right? That's times, what Casey's I mean. like. The, it, it, it's a touchy subject. It's gone national. It's national news now. Um, and Laurel did break the code of being a journalist. Like she went outside of registered communication lines, right? You yeah. normally have to go through the. the, the that's that's how it works, right? You got to ask the people. Yeah. You, like if you if you want to report on the Bengals, you got to ask. Hey, Bengals, can I can I interview Charlie Jones? And she went outside of that, and that's went against the code, and that's what they're getting. But also, like it never looks good in this country based on the Constitution, based off the things that we uh, we decided that we value in this country, and we look down at other countries for when they don't value that, and that is uh, silencing journalists. And that's what the FCs do it. Like okay, they're they're yeah. not letting the journalists do her job. So it's uh that's it's it, it's a, it's a both sides of the coin. I, yeah, that's I, all I was trying to say. I don't have I'm not on anyone's you're not side. Pro FC Cincinnati. Nope, not pro FC, not pro Laurel. Okay, I just, all right. I I want everybody to know I am pro Laurel. But are we have we figured out what the fall of Rome is? No, we, we lost. Fall. That was not. What was what was great? I was, just know we're all gonna be dead real soon. <laughs> what's great about uh. 
Trace, Trace, we get off, we get off air yesterday and we always like decompress, right? We always go like, that was a good segment. That was this. And Trace looked at us and he's like, guys, I looked for like 15 minutes on what caused the fall of Rome <laughs> and I couldn't figure it out. And I was like, yeah, that's the point. People have been, people have been looking at it for, for, for millennia now, for centuries. What, what caused it? <laughs> <laughs> okay. And to end this show, to end it on something fun, instead of the wheel of lunch, can we do a wheel of bets? We each put one bet in there, and we ride whichever one it bets. It's got to be a 12 to 1. Like, it's got to be one of the first two games. Okay. 12, 15, 12, 40, and I'll ride with you guys. All, All right. right. So what, what am I putting so on So we're going to wheel launch, and we're going to do Northwestern plus three and a half. Oh, we're doing wheel names. Okay. Sorry. I actually yeah. typed in. You're fine. Lunch. You're fine. Wheel I've... names, and we're doing what? Uh, so it's going to be – oh, and chat power rankings. I forgot chat power rankings. Uh, number one this week, as always, is Mark – Number two, and since Ohio Lakers 513 brought it up, it's Ohio Lakers 513. You are number two this week. Number three, Mouse Cop. Number four, Everett. And number five, Sean Connor. Sean Connor, congratulations. You have entered the top five in chat power rankings. Congratulations, Sean. Okay, so what am I putting in this wheel? Northwestern plus three and a half. Sean Connor finally texted me personally last night. Did he? Yeah. What did he say to you? He was just talking about something he saw on Twitter. Interesting. So shout out to Sean. I didn't know Sean had your phone number. Hmm. So Northwestern plus three and a half. Uh, Colgate plus 14 and a half. Colgate plus what? 14 and a half. 14 and a half. Okay. Marquette minus 14 and a half. Plus what? Minus 14 and a half. And San Diego State minus six and a half. These are the first four games of the day. Minus six and a half? Yes. Okay. All right, let me uh, put this up on screen. You're all going to see. Look at Sean Connor real quick, this message to Elliot. If Troy Polamalu can get a shampoo commercial with Patrick Mahomes, then why not Elliot Rearing? Look at that shiny, healthy noggin full of hair. You do have nice hair. Thank you. You do have nice hair. Oh, look, it still has the ACC I need, teams on there. I need to figure out what's the guy. I don't know how to pronounce his last name from Oakland. Jack, the guy who hit threes. Oh, I don't. I got to follow him on social media so that I can see if I go bald before him. Because I'm older. <laughs> I'm older. But our hairs are at the same pace. That guy's going to sell insurance with the best of them. That guy is very – I'll tell you what. There's always a couple one of these guys. I think the, the one guy for St. Peter's name was Doug. Uh, when St. Peter's went on that run, every once in a while, there's just a, a, a weird insurance salesman looking white guy that just takes this tournament by storm. And it's very, very funny. All Gol- right. Golki. Golki. I got to follow him on social media. I got to see who wins. If I, if I get my hair into uh, mid thirties, I'll be okay with that. I'm going to have to go bald. So I'm going to have to go shaved. Okay. All right. Casey, here we go. Yep. Spinning. Spinning. First one eliminated. This is the first one we will not be betting on. No. Colgate plus 14. No, no toothpaste. No toothpaste. No. They've been a, a terminated, eliminated. All right. It's going to be tough if it lands in the middle of those greens. Uh, Northwestern has been eliminated. It will not be Northwestern who we're betting on. Big East or Mountain West? I know who I want to bet on. And this is the winner, right? Yep. Yes. This is the winner. We Marquette. Get? Marquette. We're going market, even though the system says take Colgate. I, I feel like the system doesn't work when it's bigger than 10. That is my, that is my notch on the system. It worked yesterday. Yeah, it did. But Oakland, Long Beach State. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I can't help that. <laughs> That's it. That's all I got. Yeah, like the Stetson Mad Hatters game. That one's that one you take it. That's not a whale play. That's that's a you'll, you'll sprinkle just make sure that you're on the right <laughs> Correct. side. Correct. And and hopefully you get it right. But that's it. I'm gonna, we, look, I'm gonna look at the box score from that Bearcats game real quick, real quick. Uh, when they played Stetson, I remember watching it. It was dis- UC played horribly. We won the game by eight points. It was in December. By so, the way, Sean Connor didn't might have texted me. The person who I think is Sean Connor texted me last night, and uh, we had a little conversation. But Dan Skillings had 29 points in the Bearcats' 83-75 victory over the Stetsons. All right, uh, we got a cherry on top. Anything, anything to to get around? 
listen, we we got this thrown on us last second last night. Um, so we appreciate you guys being here. Wish cherry, we- on, cherry on top. Lindsay, do you got any uh, college age girl news for us today? Have you guys ever been axe throwing? I have. Well, that's what I'll be doing tonight is axe throwing. And I was, because my friend's uh, birthday is tomorrow, so we're all going out. And I was Where asking, axe throwing. And then we're going to go to Somerset. Are you oh, asking okay. like what axe throwing place yeah. we're going to? Yeah, oh, is there one like, like an OTR? OTR. Okay. Um, and I was asking her if we're going to like be drinking because I, I fear if I am drinking while I'm throwing axes. Have you guys seen that video where the girl threw it and it bounced back at her? I do yeah. bounce. I fear that will be me if I am <laughs> drinking and throwing axes. And I guess we are, so we'll see how that goes. But I wanted to ask you guys, what is your guys' like Roman Empire? Like you know that trend where it's like like mine would be Amelia Earhart. Like I would love What happened I, to I Amelia Earhart? That's a good one. Her. That's a good one. So like what's your guys's? Do you guys have a quick answer? I got to think for a second on mine. Roman, uh, my Roman Empire. So this is just a conspiracy theory. No, no, no like no. Uh, there was a trend on TikTok that like a little while ago is like guys always want to talk about the Roman Empire. Yeah, or it's like like that. Like guys always think about the Roman. So Empire. So it's something that's like, interesting. Yeah, yeah so, like, one I one thing that okay, that I got it. I got it. you quite a bit. I got it. It's that flight that went missing. The a Malaysia flight. Yeah, Malaysia flight, whatever. And they just never found it ever. I mean, it's clearly what it's clear what happened. It went into the ocean, but. The fact that they've only found like one little piece, it is wild. That's my Roman Empire. I have to sit here and think about what my Roman Empire is. Should probably have a better answer than that after the time that was given to me. But <laughs> uh, sports-wise, the 2000 NL MVP voting is bananas. If you guys ever, <laughs> that's that's the deep pool. Go look at the 2000 NL MVP voting and see how it all panned out. Todd Helton led the league in batting average, home runs, RBIs, hits. On base percentage, slugging percentage, and finished like seventh. Led the league in war. It, it's it's bananas. But uh, in terms of just normal things, like like just history, uh, don't have one. I, when it happened for like a year, all I could talk about was the Falcons just giving up that giant lead in the Super Bowl and how they could <laughs> probably just like need it and punted it every single play and won the game outright. Well, the, that, well, that's probably what mine would be. Okay. While Reed thinks of his, I'm going to give you a little fun fact about the Reds. Uh, the fun fact, the last time the Reds won on opening day at home in front of fans, COVID doesn't count, was, was 2019. in 2019. I was there. I, I was covering the game for the really? Van Wert Times Bulletin. That's right. You told me that. And Derek Dietrich and Jose Peraza hit home runs in that game. That's right. Uh, Yasiel Puig made his Reds debut. The only player on that 2019 roster, on that opening day roster, that is currently still on the team is... Lucas Sims. Oh, really? That's crazy. Lucas Sims is the only one. This is, uh, I think about this a lot. And I don't know how to explain this without, like, just being weird. You ever think about I, modern day technology, like being a part of the internet and everything like that? Everyone always complains, like, I was born, born in the wrong era. I love the era I'm born in. I get to be a part of the internet. I get to know anything that I, that I search the second it comes to mind. If you've ever had a conversation, who, what actor is in that movie? They used to, like, like, if we argue about that, like, oh, yeah. who was in that movie, we can just look it up and we have the answer in 10 seconds. People used to just sit and argue about it for, like, 20 minutes. But uh, the one thing that I think about with modern age quite a bit, and I don't think we give ourselves enough credit, is is the availability of food to us. I think a lot about what people, like, in the 1600s ate. And that seems, as a person who loves trying different foods, loves trying different things, that seems miserable. That would like, have been a fun time. Like bread and there's whatever meat you can you like can scrounge. Like, you find a rat on the street. Well, I mean, like they're eating probably a little better than that. But like, <laughs> no, I think it's what started that plague, right? Weren't they eating the rats? Well, the, no, they're the just living in close plague? proximity. Yeah, they were living in close proximity with the brats. Oh. But like, yeah, I just think about you just threw everything you had in a, in a pot and it just warmed up and that's the eight and you might get one meal. A day. Like I think I don't think we get enough credit for how much food we have and, and, and the readily available and all the different kinds of foods we eat. And I think about that as someone who likes trying different foods quite a bit about if I lived even 120 years ago, I'm probably eating the same meal, the same boring meal six times a week. So that's my Roman empire, the food we eat. My sport Roman empire, which kind of reminded me yesterday with the Florida game was back in 20. 20- was it 14 or something? The Louisville guy whose his bone popped out of his leg. Oh, Kevin yeah. Ware. Oh, Kevin Ware. Yep. I don't like looking at that. I, I think about that. I don't know why, but I think about I get, it a lot. I get a little queasy. I get a little queasy when stuff like that happens. I don't like when like people's legs bend backwards. Some people are drawn to that. They can they can see that. 
You know, some people are like are scared of blood. Oh yeah. I'm not afraid of blood, but like when when body parts move like they're not supposed to move, an elbow bends yeah. like these basically the two joints, right? Our, our elbows and our knees when they bend the way that they're not supposed to bend, out, cannot look. Every once in a while, a running back will have that injury. And everyone, they'll like show the replay, and you're like, "Oh my God, why are you showing me that? Just, just say he's hurt. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I don't need to see it anymore." Yeah, Nick Chubb last year. I can't do blood. Can't do it. All right, guys. Uh, this was been uh, off the bench, as we mentioned. Thank you for coming in here on a Friday. I was wondering when am I going to host the show again. We had a little, little inside bet between me and Sean. It, the answer was Friday. Answer was Friday. Sorry we didn't have more of a show planned out for you. Beautiful day. It's going to be uh, 16 games today, eight over the next two. Enjoy the madness that is March. We'll see you guys on Monday. This has been Off the Bench presented by United Dairy Farmers. See ya.